Hello. Oh, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, it's 11 a.m. here in New York City. My name is Jono. Uh, pronounced Bono, like the like the U2 singer, but with the J. And um, <clears throat> I'm super excited to live code with you all today for an extended period of time. This is going to be a six-hour session um, where we try to make uh, not quite a music video, not quite a data visualization, but um, a, a video to my my brother's band, Curling. Uh, their single is called Mallow. It's a five minute long song, so I don't know if we're gonna get through the whole thing, um, but, but we're gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna use um, some code and open source libraries that um, I've worked on or developed or co-developed um, or just used that are that are freely available by some amazing people. And uh, yeah, this is this is kind of just a huge experiment. Um, it, this got started because of the NFT crypto art um, discussion in the in the creative coding new media art community. Um, and one thing that I've been really excited by or inspired by this community of people making NFTs and crypto art is kind of the new discussion and renewed excitement and optimism towards making digital art. Uh, something that I am all for and uh, really have been wanting to participate in for a long time. So yeah, what else uh, should we share before we get started? Uh, this is my first live stream ever. Um, so there will probably be problems over the course of the day and I apologize in advance for those. I hope you can just uh, bear with me. Um, I will be trying to speak through my thought process as much as possible when I'm uh, writing code or jotting down ideas. I will try to do everything on the screen. So we're going to switch modes in a, in a second and go to a screen view of my computer desktop. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions along the way, I have, uh, I don't have two monitors, but I have my iPad kind of streaming along. So I can, um, I can see what's happening in the chat and I would be more than happy to answer any questions um, that you have. I am super nervous, um, so uh, yeah, let's just let's just dive in and get started. Um, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna minimize OBS, and I'm gonna m move over to work mode. Um, and in the chat, like if any if there are any audio issues or video issues, please let me know as well. Um, this is the workspace. Um, that I'm kind of putting out today. I, I've been kind of like imagining this as like um, the Great British Bake Show or Iron Chef or kind of these like reality TV shows that I enjoy watching in my free time. Um, just like, okay, let's put all the ingredients on the table and like let's see what we can come up with in, a, in an extended period of, of time as like a challenge. Um, so, yeah, I think the first thing we should do is listen to the track. Um, I have it embedded here in this editor, which I'll explain in a second. And um, kind of the first hour, I'll explain a lot of just like what the, this whole setup is. And then we're going to like really dive in and just go um, all out to try to try to make something cool. Um, so, yeah, I am going to hit play and uh, maybe I'll, I'll just... Uh, read some comments or, or share some information like while the song is playing. So this is Mallow uh, by Curling. The, the band's name is Curling. The album is called Definitely Banned. Hope you enjoy. And uh, I'm going to take notes uh, on the song 
while we listen to it. That intro always gets me. Um, and uh, I was messaging my brother a few days ago, you know, in the lead up to this, asking for his advice. And um, the, the key kind of like descriptors that he had was that this is all about polyrhythms. So keep an ear out for that as we listen through the song more. Responding to some chat messages. Oh, what a good track. Um, yeah, I mentioned this when I um, kind of announced that I was doing this live stream, but this song was also um, the procession music at uh, my and Amanda's wedding um, last fall. So uh, it's a great track, but it has a special meaning for me, partly because my brother's in the band that made it, but also because of uh, 
uh, my, my wedding day. Um, okay, so uh, this is still running. What is this whole environment that we're going to be making this, uh, this video in? <clears throat> this is called Frame.js. Um, it's, a, it's a website um, that I've kind of installed, so to speak, on my computer. Um, and it kind of gives you this timeline editor uh, to think about and write about code in uh, timed blocks. So um, you can go in and like make little blocks. Um, you can hit edit and this is kind of the code that is going to be run um, in this block for this amount of time. So this block, for instance, actually um, basically loads the audio file. We get the audio file here. Um, and then there are these kind of like start and, and update functions um, that the, the website calls kind of magically for you. And so the start, we basically set the audio um, to, to this file so that the player, like the playhead, the play button, fast forward, changing time and stuff is bound to that audio. And then uh, when the clip is done at the end here, the player basically um, like detaches from the audio file. Um, I've also added this like uh, equalizer that you can see in the bottom right hand corner here. And this is something that both we can pull in as a data source to kind of influence the animations. Um, but it's also just like a nice visual cue to see like, oh, are we kind of like, are there low frequency noises, high frequency noises kind of occurring or, or whatever um, at, at certain points in the song. Um, and this equalizer um, uh, is, is a, it's a, this like component, I guess, um, is also a library that I made uh, many years ago for other audiovisual work that I did. Um, so that's available on GitHub for free. Um, and, uh, and yeah, this white screen in the middle, or this, sorry, this white square in the middle, this is what our canvas is gonna be. Um, normally in other projects, this would be, you know, like the full screen or whatever size window your window is. Um, but for the purpose, you know, because we're making a video, it's gonna be an NFT, it needs to be kind of a certain size. Um, I made the, um, the, the dimensions kind of fixed. It's a 1024 by 1024, which has kind of like a, um, it's a specific size, not so much for video, so to speak, but for um, live, live coding and uh, graphics programming, 1024 is, is, a, is a special number. Um, <clears throat> And uh, on the white square, we're basically going to be drawing with code. Um, we're going to be drawing in two dimensions. Everything's going to be 2D. Uh, we're using this library that I made called 2.js, which is, allows you to draw in two dimensions um, with code. Um, and uh, those are the main elements that we're going to be using in this editor. Um, the other windows in this panel, uh, to have things set up, I need to have a, a terminal open that's running a local server to host these files so that we can load audio files and fetch other things if we need to. Um, so this is all that, but I think, um, I can't see it, but I'm pretty sure my video is somewhere around here of like my live screen. So this in information is not super important. Um, and, and hopefully, uh, uh, yeah, the video, the video of me kind of works, works all right. You can see me hunching and my receding hairline and stuff. Um, okay, so I kind of have some stuff already set up here. What, what is that exactly? Um, Frame.js, this, this kind of editor, uh, doesn't really have any kind of like uh, rules, so to speak, of like how you need to use it. And so I've basically kind of created a little, little setup um, for us to, to make our visuals today. Um, and so the way that I did that is uh, I added some additional scripts. So this two script is actually just like pulling the two JS library. I just copy and pasted the build script 
uh, not the build script, but the built minified, or not minified, but the built code. Um, I just pasted it in here. Same with the equalizer. Um, the equalizer has some other objects that are associated with it. It uses um, 2.js to draw these shapes. Um, so that needs to go second. And then in the setup, um, I basically make our canvas um, and kind of hook into the calls that Frame.js needs in order to render properly. And uh, I can show you in my downloads folder, I tried last night, this is a test video, um, to just to make sure that the rendering was working well and it works great. So uh, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, or Mr. Dube for um, this amazing library and this addition, the render function is super cool. He has um, he has made his own set of uh, NFTs, crypt crypto art, little videos or GIFs or even um, 3D files that you can view. He um, he posts on uh, Hick a Nunk, um, which is like a Tezos based. Um, proof of stake uh, backed crypto art uh, marketplace. I don't actually know if I strung those words together to make any sense, but hopefully I did. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what else? Um, I think that's it for the technical side. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, in terms of the song, uh, listening to it just now with you all, I kind of heard four, wait, one, two, three, four, I have wrote it down on my sketchbook, five distinct sections to the song. There's kind of this intro, um, like bubbling noise, and then there's kind of a rhythm that started, and then a crescendo, and then it kind of starts over again. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna jump to this Figma file that uh, has kind of the frames from the live stream, but also um, my brother sent me the lyrics to the song. Uh, these are the lyrics. And uh, reading through the lyrics, it kind of <clears throat> reminds me a little bit of the pop band Phoenix. Um, there's this kind of like uh, sense of kind of like, it doesn't quite add up to a s explicit story, but it does kind of create images in your mind. And I think um, it's kind of said in a way that is like, you know, maybe uh, English is kind of more of a texture rather than, um, you know, uh, a conveyed idea. And um, this kind of goes into this chat that I had with my brother. This is, uh, I copy and pasted from Signal. Um, but he's just kind of basically explaining kind of like what the process of this piece is for him and the band. Um, and so it's, it's based on these things I mentioned earlier, polyrhythms, um, which are kind of like uh, the, and I'm probably gonna screw this up because I'm not a musician, but kind of like the concurrent playing of different rhythms and how that can make a new rhythm um, out of, out of kind of like two distinct things. And so he describes kind of his guitar going, you know, on uh, more of a sh straight down one, two, three, four, and Bernie, the other guitarist doing a one and two and three and, and the drummer doing a one, two, three. And that's kind of how the piece starts. And, um, as he kind of like explained it more, there's kind of this interplay between jazz and rock. The, the polyrhythms and the dissonance are kind of really taken from jazz structure and um, the kind of like strumming and moments of kind of like, uh, I will say like emotional um, outbursts are kind of more traditional rock anthem-y kinds of, kinds of um, techniques. So I like this idea that there's kind of two two sides going. Um, and uh, yeah, then, then there's also a lot of effects kind of being being used as well, different, different kind of like re reversing or reverb um, <clears throat> to create kind of 
uh, dissonance. And, and then also like moments where, uh, you know, basically everybody breaks down and doesn't, doesn't kind of like sit on a specific beat or rhythm. Um, I really love this this message that he sent. That's some shit a jazz scat person would do. Um, you know, so there, there are a lot of different references here that I think we can pull from. Sonically, this is like pretty different from a lot of the other audiovisual work that I've done pieces to. And so I'm a little bit nervous, but also excited to kind of try to, to make images kind of associate with this in a different, in a different genre of sound. Um, I think kind of like stepping back, this uh, image that is also kind of like the thumbnail for the live stream, this is the album art for their, um, for their uh, album, the album art for their album, who, who'd have thought? Um, and uh, it's by a Taiwanese artist, oh, shoot, I'm totally blanking on the name of the artist, maybe if Jojo's still up, he'll, he'll let me know who the artist is. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I think this is a, it's a, it's a beautiful kind of like comic book series of, you know, different sculptures with abstract art behind them and a scene. It's kind of surreal or, um, avant-garde, but kind of framed in this comic book way and the flat, um, the flatness of the drawing is uh, completely uh, in line with what we can do in in 2JS. Not not that we're gonna make you know formal stuff like these sculptures. Um, another thing I like about it is it just it reminds me a little bit of kind of this whole vaporwave movement, like the colors and the the kind of like neoclassical references and um, yeah, it's just like uh, you know. Every year for the last like four years on Spotify, it's been like, wow, you're really into vaporwave. So I guess that explains a lot about me. Um, <clears throat> I think what we're gonna try to do. Oh, Alan says the album art is by Chu Yi. Um, so go go look them up. Um, and also my mom said that too. So thank you guys for um, for helping me out there. Um, yeah, so in terms of like what I think we can make, what, what we sh we're gonna, what I'm going to try to do in the next few hours, um, I really like these references, uh, from Georgie Le Le Jetty, uh, Leggetti, I'm not sure, um, and also Giannis Xenakis. Um, these are graphical notations of sound scores. Um, that have like really interesting kind of like, um, you know, I mean, they're graphical scores of music, so they're, they have this kind of very musical quality to them, but they're also using abstract shapes in an interesting way that, um, we could kind of like repurpose and use in, in kind of like parametric or programmatic or generative ways. Um, this one is really cool though, like the kind of like whipping and smearing kind of look to it. Um, and, uh, and then also this, this, uh, Giannis one is, is really cool. Just kind of the elements of all the dots and the lines. And to be honest, I actually, I think, uh, the equalizer is really, um, this, this library that we're going to use down here in the bottom right hand corner, um, is really, uh, inspired by kind of this look. I, I love seeing just kind of like the connections between the different notes in a, in a way that, I mean, this is super complex and it sounds like noise. Uh, there's like a lot of different sounds happening. It's not melodic, but um, but the visual presentation is, is really, really interesting. Um, I think the most important takeaway for me in kind of looking at these and also kind of like to come up like, okay, what are we gonna do for the next five and a half hours is kind of this sense of like, okay, what are the elements that, the visual elements that we're gonna use to represent um, Mallow? And um, my process for this, which is not too different from a lot of other audiovisual projects that I've made, um, but is not quite been done in a time frame that we're doing. 
uh, today is uh, to basically select and make a few components at kind of different scales. So you have something that is really big that takes up the whole screen like this kind of brown blobby shape um, and that kind of has a, a certain presence on the screen. You have kind of these smaller elements like the 93, 94, 95, 96 or these kind of like time signatures, I think that's what they represent, or kind of like sections of the song that kind of like frame bigger objects as kind of these like really small details. And then, um, and then there are kind of these like, uh, I'll just say like kind of middle sized uh, shapes that you know you can really fill out the piece with. And there's like a set of, there's a certain variety, which is cool but it's not so diverse that you're not, you know, you're not, you don't know what you're looking at. Um, and for me, this is kind of like a foreground, middle ground, background kind of sense. <clears throat> if you were to think about it, like in terms of drawing or painting, um, you need to have all three filled out in order to have kind of like a full composition. And um, so that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to get to a full composition. Um, whew, okay, so let me grab a little sip of water and we can dive into this. Um, my hope is that we can basically make, you know, one of these visual components <clears throat> in about an hour. Uh, so that gives us about five, which we can then kind of place and arrange however we want on the, on the page and in the timeline to kind of fill out fill out a song. And one benefit is that these don't have a lot of type, but we have the lyrics, so I think that's a pretty cool um, additional kind of material that we have. And I am definitely going to pull the colors and maybe some textures from, from this piece. Um, so yeah, uh, let's dive in. This is, this is kind of this, this square that I had as a test block just to make sure that things were moving, uh, working correctly. Um, and, uh, but I'm gonna delete it because we actually don't need this at all. Um, and I'm gonna turn it into not a rotating rectangle, but I'm gonna call this the, um, we're gonna give this a, a gray backdrop. Um, and uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. Got a big gray backdrop and this is going to be a um, two dot rectangle is the oh wait no I'm going to switch it gray backdrop and this is going to be a two uh, rect uh, like a textured rectangle um, <clears throat> and what I want to do for this first uh, piece for this first component, well, it's not even a component really. I just want to get the background. I, I love this gray texture um, on on the album art, and I want to see if we could create that in 2JS. Um, so I'm actually gonna open up Photoshop, um, and we're just gonna make like a noise function <clears throat> in a gray color. Save it out as a small square and load it in as a tile. Um, you know, which I think is easy, but I haven't done something like that in a long time. So maybe there's something I'm forgetting in this, uh, in this whole process. Um, okay, so I'm going to make a new image. I'm just going to make it 128 by 128 pixels, 72 DPI. It can be small. It doesn't need to be super big. And I'm going to select, um, I'm going to select the area, and I think I need to fill it with a color before I can add noise. So I'm just going to fill it with the, with the kind of gray. Um, so it's like a between 175 and 200 kind of RGB gray color. So let's see if we do B here, say 200. Uh, 200, 200, 200. Okay. So we got our gray background, and now I can go into filter, noise, add noise, and now we get this gray 
kind of crunchy noise. So we can kind of turn the amount up as much or as little as we want. I think 33, the distribution, we can look at uniform or Gaussian. Gaussian. Um, I think kind of for this style, it looks more uniform. Well, uh, let's do 15%, 16% Gaussian. It's monochromatic. Um, although it's kind of more gray than that, huh? Mm, we can also just like tint everything again. So I'll just, uh, sorry, like Photoshop is for some reason really slow on this computer. I don't know why. Um, I want to do, yeah, this kind of, not soft light. So I, I just did a, another gray and um, I think this kind of lighter color has a nice crunchiness to it that I that I like. I hit command one to see kind of like this is this is kind of like the full size view of that texture. So I'm gonna save that out. We're gonna save it as a JPEG, six kilobytes. JPEG smaller than a GIF. Um, I'm not gonna optimize it because I want the crunchiness. Zero blur. You know, I always learned in like, right after graduating from DMA that 60 was like the quality for web. You like couldn't get higher than that. But you know, that was like in 2008 when high DPIs didn't exist. So I'm gonna bump it up to 100. Um, Cause we're making a video. We're not, we're not a, oh my God, where do I go here? Um, okay, I gotta go to the D drive. That's where kind of all the files that I have are. I'm kind of in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I hope I don't share anything that's uh, personal here <laughs> um, or too personal. Um, okay, Frame.js is our project. Uh, JavaScript, nope, not JavaScript, but examples, files. Okay, and we'll call this um, gray texture.jpg. Okay, save that. I'll just minimize Photoshop. Maybe we'll need it later. Maybe it'll crash my computer. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> and now instead of, okay, so now we're back in this rectangle. Instead of rotating the rectangle, um, I'm just gonna delete that line. We're gonna say, let's say the rect.rotation equals zero. The width and height of this rectangle should be the width and height of the screen. So you can see here that this is automatically changing as I edit it, um, which is like something really cool about this whole uh, setup and library. I'm not gonna, um, there's no stroke on the image and let's just uh, fill it with the same RGB value for now so we make sure everything's working as we expect it to. So now if I close it, this is kind of a gray texture. Another thing that I'm noticing is that this probably is gonna be um, around for the length of the video. So I'm gonna make this 300 seconds long. So now this whole clip is the full length um, of the track. And I'm gonna move it back down here. The, the, the vertical position of each of these keyframes, um, kind of like they execute in order. So this one happens, then this one happens, then this one happens. And um, wherever the red line is, if there is, a, if there is a clip underneath it, then it will execute. And so because it's the backdrop, kind of want to execute first as opposed to later, I guess. I don't think it really matters, but. Um, yeah, okay, so we got this rectangle. The next thing we want to do is load it, uh, load the texture. So I'm going to make a texture as a new to texture. And the position is in examples. Um, it's in examples. I'm just gonna copy this one. It's in the same folder, relatively speaking. It's in examples, files, what do we call it? Gray texture.jpg. And I will open up this folder just to make sure. 
that that is the case. Oh, frame JS examples files. Yeah, there it is. Great texture.jpg. This um this side here, I'll increase the size of this. This is um the error console just in case something happens. So see it couldn't load the video into 2JS, but it was able to load the texture. And so and now instead of saying rec.fill equals the color, we can say it equals the texture. And now we can see the textures loaded in here. So that's pretty cool. But it's not the whole width and height. Uh, so um, I'm pretty sure a texture has a scale, a rotation, and a repeat. So I'm going to say that the texture.scale equals four. So now it's pretty big. Wow. But we're going to have to make the repeat. I can't remember if the repeat is an object. Oh, uh, it's a, oh, I think actually we don't need to do the scale. We can just do repeat equals repeat. Okay, there we go. Look at that. All right, we got our first little background component. It doesn't animate, but that's okay. It's, it's got a kind of a nice texture. Um, yeah, feeling, feeling, look at it, look at that. 11.37, we already got something drawing. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's go back to the track. I like this intro, the mallow, the mallow bubble. That's what I'm calling the intro here. I actually want to ask Jojo, like, what instrument is that? It sounds like an organ, but maybe it's a guitar through, like, some pedal filters or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> but this goes on for 20 seconds. It comes in and out throughout the song, so I want the first element to be kind of like a blobby, a blobby thing like that. Um, if we go to the 2JS <coughs> website, excuse me, this is like more talking than I've done probably like since the pandemic started um, in a row. So this is this is kind of like a cool blobby thing that I feel like is a good reference, um, but we're not going to make it physics based because we're using a timeline and this physics thing is really old and pretty inconsistent. So, um, but it's basically you take a circle and um, you can like apply, oh, it's an organ. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, it sounds like an organ, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I, th I think organs, right? There's like a air element in that. I don't know, somehow visually, like this, this kind of visual element seems like a, a natural fit. And so what this is, is it's basically just a circle. <clears throat> An organ through a tape machine multiple times. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Um, so we're going to make a new little, uh, little guy here. Let's zoom in. Make a new clip. Um, and I'm going to make this one... I'm gonna make this one 20 seconds long, right? Because that's how long the intro is. And um, we'll call this, uh, the effect will be the mallow, will be the blob. And I'll call it mallow. And I'm gonna get our canvas, our reference to two. And I'm gonna make the blob is a circle, so I'll um, there's like a function to make a circle. Um, and when we start, uh, when the animation starts, we're basically going to set the circle dot position dot x equals the center of the screen. So we'll call that position dot y equals the 
center of the screen, uh, or the, the center of the width, center of the height. And so now if I jump back, we should see uh, a resource, oops, resources.get. Um, okay, now I'm not having any errors. If I think if I refresh, play. Okay, uh, no errors, but, oh, I need to add it to the scene, two dot add circle. And when I end, we need to two dot remove circle. And I'm also gonna call this function call, uh, wait, I'm also, uh, cause I made this library, I know kind of all the little weird tricks around it. I'm going to change the two dot resolution. I'm going to save it first. Uh, I'm going to increase the resolution, which means I'm going to change how many points the circle is made of and increase it uh, from four to like 16 so that the kind of blobbiness, waviness, like we have like a higher fidelity to, to swap it out. So I'm going to say the resolution equals, yeah, let's say 16. And then I'll just change it back because, you know, we might use it later, so I don't want to accidentally, like, screw myself later. Um, and we have this circle. Okay, so let's see. In here, this update function, this is kind of this cool space where the actual animation happens. This progress value that we get, um, if I... Um, like print it out, <clears throat> you can see it, it kind of showed up right here. It's a value from zero to one to tell you kind of like where in the clip is the playhead. So as I move it, you'll see that this changed on the right hand side and it goes closer to one as I get to the end. It's at 0.995. Um, so yeah, that's That's how we're going to do all of our animations. Um, what we're going to do <clears throat> is uh, in the update loop, real quick, I'm just going to check how many vertices we have. So we have four still. Oh. Really? Well, let's refresh. No, it's still four. Okay, so change of plans. I'm not going to use the circle. To make the circle, I'm going to do kind of the underlying, um, the underlying object for a circle, which is a path. I'm going to give it points, and points. It's not opened, but it is curved. Um, so I'll just say it op uh, is open and is curved. And we'll say, so is open <coughs> represents, um, is the path an open or is it a closed shape? And is it curved? Is the line that's drawn between the path, is that uh, a auto-calculated curve or is it a straight line? And so it's a curve because we kind of want to make something that looks like a circle. I don't need to change the resolution stuff anymore, so I'll just get rid of it. And uh, and then we also need our points. So of our points, I'm going to make a, a list of vertices. Um, I'm going to make it, what did we say, 16. This is nice because we can always change it later and it gives like a different effect. Um, <clears throat> and I will say uh, var x. Oh. I, this is like pretty much what I do like every day, all day um, during my day job is do these like four statements to make a kind of like full percentage. <clears throat> and so we're going to take the percentage and then we're going to plot the dots out in a circle. Um, so that's like kind of the math of, you know, math dot cosine theta. Theta is the percentage times math dot pi times two bar y equals math.sine theta. 
And now we can say points dot push. And 2JS expects this object called an anchor. Um, and we can just pass the x, y coordinates to that anchor. And so now, here down here, we can see we have 16 points. Um, we do have a radius that we'll need to adjust, but that's okay. Um, right now, we'll do that in the animation. And if I close this, you can see there's a little speck of a dot right in the center. That's our, that's our blob. So when we actually go in here and animate it, basically gonna each frame that we animate, um, we're going to, I'm gonna try to keep the white space styles of Mr. Dube. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go through the vertices. We'll go through points.length, I++. This kind of allows us to go through every point in our list, we'll get our point, points i, and then we'll say point dot x equals um, this theta value again. So we got to calculate theta uh, var percentage equals i over points dot length var theta equals percentage times math up math up pi times two point x equals math dot cosine theta point y equals math dot sine theta this is where the fun part happens so now I'm just gonna set up at the top of this function here a radius and I'm gonna say it's 2 dot width times 0 0.25 so a quarter of the width and now I can say radius times x now you can see this line showed up radius dot y, and now we have our circle. I'm gonna also get rid of the stroke. Circle dot no stroke. So now we just have this white circular shape. I'm actually going to actually make this minus one so it's a full curve, and I am gonna make this an open object so that we get more of the look that we want because it's not a full circle. Um, oh, there's a, uh, there's an error. Is there an error? No, no error. Okay, so now... Uh, we have our circle in the center and so now what's cool is this two dot width we can basically um, manipulate uh, to make kind of wiggly or blobby or whatever whatever you want to call it. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we need to uh, mix it with this progress. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kind of over the progress, over the life of this clip, it's going to come out small and then come in big and then go back small. So we can use sign math.sign to uh, to do this kind of tapering is the effect that I call it. I don't know if that's like the right term or not, but uh, math.sign times progress and then math.pi. And so if you know a sine wave, a sine wave from zero to pi basically looks like this. And so if we multiply taper times the radius, we're going to see that happen. Um, and it's going to go in and then go out. And that looks cool, but it also just looks like a circle scaling, which is like pretty not what we're going for. Uh, I don't want to, there's nothing wrong with the circle scaling. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to modify that for every point in the circle instead of doing it for all the points equally in the same circle. So I'm going to cut this and I'm actually going to paste it in here. Um, and now it's going to look the same, but now it's calculating every for every point. So now we can just like change this a little bit with, um, you know, some other kind of like 
random i don't want to say randomized value but yeah some some kind of like displacement or, or something to kind of like alter alter the state um <clears throat> so how are we going to do that it's 1150 we're going to get on making this component um <clears throat> I'm just going to add I and just kind of see what that does. Okay, so that's not really what we're going for, but it's kind of interesting. What we could do, actually, is now that I'm thinking about it, we could map the values of each of these frequencies. Um, to the point as kind of instead of I here it's kind of like a modifier on the radius so let's see how do we do that um, the equalizer um, I'm just gonna I basically use the console here as like a great way to just like test stuff out when I forget. So the EQ <clears throat> has a... Uh, is it the bands object? Nope, that's all the drawings. Equalizer dot analyzer dot data? Data, this is 64 units. There should only be 16 what else is in the analyzer? Max decibels. All right, I don't remember. We're going to have to look in the code of the equalizer. This is me being, you know, pretty rusty on this stuff. I wrote this library maybe like five years ago. And there I just like totally forgot like what I wrote basically. Oh, the step is the data dot length over the band length. Um, analyzer dot data clamp this dot analyzer dot. Oh, okay, it is it is the analyzer dot data. Okay, we'll just use the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, just. Uh, Okay, we'll just kind of like spread it out against the analyzer data dot length. What does that mean exactly? Uh, we'll find out. <clears throat> okay, so I need to get the analyzer, so I, I need to call it uh, up here. Resources dot get. The frame.js library has this great resources object that you can basically add in. Add in a set get different um, objects for yourself to use later in other clips. Um, let's see. The equalizer has data. It was equalizer.analyzer.data. Okay, so say var data equals equalizer.analyzer.data. And now we have this percentage I need to turn the percentage into an index to get the equalizer. So I'll say var eid equals percentage times data dot length. And I will just floor that. So now we can get a specific frequency bandwidth. <clears throat> and then I need to get what is that data. I always talk about this with like previous coworkers like when I worked it. Google is like, so should we call this now datum? <laughs> because we're getting one of the data. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll just call it FF, uh, FFT because it's like sound related noise, uh, like uh, amplitude of, of volume. Nobody's really going to look at this code, although we might, uh, we might, I might, uh, I might tokenize the code as like a, a nice portion of, of the giveaway, or not the giveaway, the sale of this whenever that happens. 
Um, okay, so the FFT is data EID. And we're going to divide it by 255 because this is a value that goes from 0 to 255. <clears throat> um, so now we have this special FFT that we can basically multiply times the width here. And we're going to say instead of this radius 2 dot width, we'll multiply the FFT times 2 dot width times 0 0.25 plus 2 dot width times 0 0.1. So there's at least like some level of um, visibility uh, aside from the taper. So let's see how that goes. Of course, we can't see anything. This is my favorite part of programming and will be your favorite part maybe of this live stream because the majority of this is probably just gonna be us debugging problems that arise. So let's see if the FFT actually is returning data. Sometimes it's NAN. Oh, yikes, that's not good. Oh, because the percentage comes in at one sometimes. So we gotta do I over points dot length. All right, there we go. That's kind of looking like a blob now. What do you guys think? Now we're getting somewhere. Um, okay, let's not console log this. My old like Photoshop days, I'm like, I should hit Command S, but this is um, this is a website. You can't hit Command S on it. Uh, okay. So I think what was nice is that you know we have this shape happening. Gonna also one. Okay, turning the volume down just a little bit so I can we can listen to it and play it. Um, okay, I like how this is coming in, but uh, maybe want to give some more evenness to the shape somehow. So we can do that in a number of ways. The blob uh, can be, <sighs> instead of just doing one pass through the full sequence, I think I have, uh, I think there's like an average. Is there an average? Yeah, what does this average object have? Um, geez, I don't remember. That's like showing my ineptitude in programming. Um, okay, what I think would be cool is if <clears throat> instead of going through um, the full range is to maybe go through half the range twice. I know that sounds kind of weird, but hear me out on this. So instead of going I less than points dot length, uh, well, we will do that, but we'll just modulo it by 0.5. And so it only goes up to 0.5 and then it goes back to zero and then goes to 0.5 again. So now we're doing 0.5 twice. So now when you see this come in, it's, uh, it's got this weird yeah, that's like pretty interesting, like kind of kind of blobby like this. Maybe maybe we add this blue color. Oh wait, where's what what the Okay, so that's uh Why why doesn't that do anything? Okay, so 75 138 235. Um Let's give this a stroke. So instead of no stroke, let's say stroke equals RGB. Say it with me, 75, 135, 255. What was it? 
75, 135, 215. 75, 135, 215. So now it's got this cool, oh, now this is starting to look like the definitely banned aesthetic kind of um cool all right this is our first component that's like pretty exciting um we could probably tweak this more and i do want to tweak this more i'm gonna make it bigger i think um if we make it you know one three two and three three this is this is kind of like closer to half the screen so yeah maybe four one no this is two five. Oh, here we go this is kind of more blobby does <laughs> Oh, that's too big though. Whoops. Maybe two, uh, four. Just kind of fiddling with the numbers. Cool. The other thing I want to do is that, like this fade in of it like coming in like this is like pretty slow. Not really like how the music works. And so I want to change that. Um, the taper. Taper actually can come back out up here. We don't need to calculate that every single time. <clears throat> and here, this progress, I'm actually going to throw under a exponent, exponent. And if I put it under like a low fraction, it's going to do. It's going to make it like a tighter, tighter animation. Um, so there, that came in. That came in just like hot. Uh, maybe too hot. Let's tone that down a little bit. Nah, I liked it hotter though, didn't, didn't you? Yeah. Does it come in as a circle though? That's... It does come in as a circle. Is that okay? I guess that's fine. Um... Points I length minus one amount minus one acre dot x i i this is zero points i theta yeah okay Maybe we should do this even smaller so we get like a quarter, quad, quad, yeah, now it's like four. Let's take a look at that. All right, I got a weird idea now. Let's like actually modify this on top of time. Okay, it's 12.04. Like, let's not spend too much time on this specific part. Um, we can make this change over time. So I'm going to make this progress. But we don't want it to go over. I will also do kind of this math dot uh, the, I'm going to just call this the um, cap and let's say var cap equals progress modulo, oh no, sorry, progress math dot sign progress times math dot pi. So this is a zero to one value. And now I'm going to just multiply it by 0 0.5. And so now we're going to get something pretty crazy. Yeah, this is kind of like... Yeah. Interesting. 
Okay, in a like a longer term project environment, I would like to tween between those states so it's kind of smooth, but we'll just live with the weird like change. All right, nice work. I'm gonna drink some water. First component down. <clears throat> okay, so after that, what happens? So now we get into like the rhythm of the track. It's this like dun 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 dun. Let's see. So. <clears throat> I have this idea, this is like a pretty bad idea, but maybe I can show my code pen. This is um, a design that I made. Can I just do this? I can't. This is a design that I made with Ewan, who is an amazing designer in San Francisco. What projects, pens, all pens. view change view full page view so this animation happened pretty quick but I think this could be like a cool way to basically like draw a line and then have shapes kind of pop up out of the line and this kind of reminds me of like <clears throat> yeah like putting stuff on a staff, a musical staff, or I don't know, like, what do you think? Let me know. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah. So kind of like, imagine if this was the staff and then like the shapes, you know, like a star. Well, okay, maybe not a star, but like, kind of animated in above above the shape. I think that would be pretty cool. And it would be easy, easy to reproduce it. Um, so, just wanna make sure I'm like removing everything after I add it. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> okay. So let's see, this is at 20, we're at 20, I'm going to make a new, oh, sorry, not a new, uh, I just want a new block, double click, we'll say this is 20, 22, we'll make this longer, we'll figure that out later. So we'll call this, um, oh yeah, it's like a line with like notes coming up. It's kind of like a horizon. What's the right word? Horizon, no. Sun rises in the morning. Let's just call it horizon. I, I, don't, I don't really know what else to call it right now. We'll call it a melodic horizon. Yeah, that's got like a nice. You could make a band out of that name. Probably is a band out of that melodic horizon band. Oh, look at our melodic horizon band camp. Who is this? Oh, of course, it's like a metal band. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Side notes aside, melodic horizon. This is gonna be the, okay, so let's go back to JoJo's notes. What did he call this? So this, this kind of starts on the down straight, one, two, three, four. So we'll call this the down straight. And we're gonna need two Um, we're gonna 
basically be making a lot of shapes on the fly this time instead of caching them. But we will have a line. Okay. So there's there's quite a few things. There's a line and then there are shapes that are kind of like part of part of this component. The shapes are kind of random and they kind of come out. <clears throat> okay, so we'll make a let's just let's just let's just start with the line. We'll animate the line in. So the line is a new two dot line. A two dot line takes a uh, two sets of x, y positions, kind of like a start and an end point. And I, I guess in my mind what I'm like having trouble visualizing <laughs> um, is, uh, oh hey look, there's Reza. Hey Reza. Um, so it, it takes uh, two x, y points. Um, so I'll say x1, y1, x2, y2, and I'll just place them here, x1, y1, x2, y2, and <clears throat> kind of make this pretty, what do you guys think, small or big? Um, width, it would be negative width times 0 0.5. Zero uh, and then width times zero point five. Okay, it's far width equals two dot width times. We'll make this pretty small. We're gonna have a, like a lot of these come in and out. So, um, yeah, I think a, maybe even smaller than a quarter of the screen. Maybe a fifth of the screen. Fifth is point two, not point five. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, and then we need to add it. Two dot add line. And now, if I hover over here, um, well, we should see it. Okay, uh, there's going to be a group that kind of houses all of these shapes. This is like another thing we need to make. Uh, um, the group equal oh, group eh, equals new two dot group. I got like Reza joined, and now I'm like all nervous. Can't, I can't type straight. Um, so I'm going to add the line to the group, and then I'm going to add the group to two. And then at the end here, I'm going to, um, to uh, remove group. And this group, we need to put uh, group.position.x. We need to place it somewhere. And for this, I'm going to basically just like randomly put it for now uh, somewhere on the screen. Um, and so now you can see, if I close this, you can see there's a black line at the bottom and <clears throat> it'll stay there, but every time I, it looks like it's changing a lot, but when you play through it, it's only gonna set once. So there, it's set, it set there, and then if I play it again, it'll set in a different place. There, this time it's set here. So this is what's kind of cool about using the start function kind of in, in this uh, Frame.js environment. We, we're basically like putting it somewhere new every time, but as long as it's live, um, it'll be visible. So we don't, uh, the randomness, and maybe it's better to, Kind of reduce how kind of crazy that is. Um, so it's this is kind of more on the um, center of the screen now. But it like so it won't like catch the edges basically. Um, so yeah, thanks for the vote of confidence, Reza. Um, okay, so we have this group. We have this line coming in. Um, the width, we should probably randomize the width of this also. 
So maybe um, 2.2, we'll do like a math.random times 0.2, and then we'll also add like 0.2. So it's always be that width, but it could be maybe even a lot bigger. Um, this kind of gives you like this nice sense. Stroke, I think black is good, although let's let's look at the album art. Maybe there's a better color we can pull. Kind of simmer on that. For now, I'll keep it black. I'll increase the line width. Um, so now you can see it's thicker. And in this progress, we're basically, we're going to animate this line in. Um, so at the start, I'll say line.ending equals zero. 2JS has this cool function to basically um, tie kind of this uh, growth of a shape or a stroke to, um, to the line. So when I hit play now, you can see uh, it's coming in really slowly, but it is coming in. And <clears throat> right now that looks like pretty much like a progress bar, but we're gonna make this look cooler than that. Um, we're basically gonna cut off. We're gonna turn. We're gonna turn the progress into okay. We need to get to the end, but we want to do it in like you know a fraction of the time in just like a couple seconds. Um, so we'll say bar ending equals progress. I always start by just basically like replacing what I started with so that I know that it works and there's no like new errors. But now we can add on to this. <clears throat> basically what I'm gonna say now is I'm gonna um, multiply this times 0.25, uh, sorry, I'm gonna multiply it by four. So this means at a quarter of the time, it will get to the full ending. So now when I hit play, not space, but play, you can see this is animating faster. <clears throat> and what else was I thinking about that? Yeah, maybe, well, I mean, just gonna let's listen to the track again. Do, 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 do. Okay, so that takes, it's only a half a second. It's really, it's really fast. Um, so let's maybe multiply it by 10. And we can also do this um, kind of like math.pow thing to kind of like make it a curve. see that now okay so that was fast dish but okay well let's how long are we gonna keep one of these on screen then maybe let's keep it only two seconds long maybe like five seconds long so I'll tighten this down to 25 so now you can see it's much shorter, and now when I look at this, when I play it back, it'll it loads in really fast. Um, and here the ending only takes a value from zero to one, so I don't need to worry. Although maybe I should be like math.min just to be just to be safe. Don't go over one. <clears throat> and okay, so now we have kind of the line animate in. That's kind of nice. And now it would be cool to have pff, the shapes kind of shoot out kind of one at a time. Do, 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 do. Um, so let's go back to the animation, uh, to the song. So I'm kind of seeing like, basically like one hits with each of these tick marks. Do, do, do. And then by 21, they're all out. So then we'll kind of have to figure out a way to animate them away, maybe fade them out or some kind of transition out. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm just gonna increase this actually a little bit. 
And um, okay, so now we need to make the shapes. So here we'll say the shapes, and it's a uh, one, two, do do do. There's so there's three shapes um, for this one, and I'll call. I'm gonna switch the effect name and the animation name because the down straight is something we're gonna use this later. But I'm gonna change how many notes are being used and this is going to how we're going to build up the polyrhythm visually okay so at the top here i'll just say var amount equals three so that's how many shapes we're going to make i'm going to use our fun if statement again let's say the shapes is an array and for var i equals zero i less than amount i plus plus shapes.push shape and so now the shape we want it to be a random shape so if we go back to the editor review here I think I had a function that was basically just like let's generate a random shape because uh, I'm lazy and don't want to make the same code twice <laughs> um Look at this, I'm using even the same language, amount, stuff like that, kind. Oh yeah, here we go. So we're gonna go in here. So now I've got Okay, so we're going to kind of generate randomly one of these kinds. They take a radius and an X and Y. So the radius is something that we're going to need to set. Probably set it based on the height. It'd be width times 0.33. So it'll be a third of the size of the radius. Um, and then the X and the Y, we, maybe we want them to kind of like stagger. It like goes 1, 1, 1. And so <clears throat> the X and Y would be, drum roll, um, it would be, well, we need that percentage. This is kind of like the classic, you know, thing that I always use and need. So we have a percentage. It'll be the percentage times the width. That's the X. And then the Y will be kind of like modulo, or no, I won't do that yet. Um, it'll be a magnitude, how much away will it be? And it should be maybe like the radius times a little bit more than the radius. We'll probably randomize this later. And then I'll make an if statement that's just like if modulo zero sorry if modulo one which is basically like every time it's it's just like a quick method to just stagger things just like trust me on that i guess um i'm, I'm starting to feel the fatigue of live streaming for more than just like a, a hour long meeting um we'll do y times equals negative one and so this will kind of like reverse <clears throat> the position of the shapes so we have this entity we made the entity you got the x y r we got all those values probably gonna change the fill probably want the fill to be something coming from here um, so let's make one yellow. So that's 255, 240, 240. Okay, so we need a color palette. Oh my gosh, all these things, all these fun things. I don't want to repeat using the color palette, so I'm actually going to make this new script that I'm just going to call color palette. I'm going to edit it. Say palette equals an array. And it's just going to be CSS values that we're gonna pull. So this was RGB, what did 
maybe even say 255, 240, 40. 255, 240, yeah, close enough. And then the blue, which we had was 50, 125, 50, 125, 225, RGB. And then all of the, the blue is often the outline. So maybe we'll say palette dot stroke equals the blue. You can do weird things like this in JavaScript. Um, I'm going to basically call, uh, set it so that we can use it later. It's the resources. Okay, so we got the yellow, we need the green, we need the pink, fuchsia, magenta, whatever you want to call it. 240, 63, 168, 240, 163, 168. Um, where's the green? The green's over here. This is like classic CMYK colors. 220, 155, 50, 20, 155, 50. So we got a green, we got a yellow, we got a, we got a nice color. Are there other colors here? I guess there's white. That one's easy. Um, and I guess we could also do this darker gray too. That's a 90-90-90. Okay, so now we got this color palette. I'm gonna reload these scripts so that we have access to the color palette. And I'm actually just gonna refresh the page just to be safe. I'm gonna, oh no, shape is not defined because this is entity and this is group.add entity. Okay, so look, there we got some shapes. That's, that's good. What's not happening though? Oh, the X, oh, we have to minus width times 0 0.5. It's okay, so now they're kind of coming in correctly. This I percent one didn't work. I percent one, can you do that? Oh wait, two, duh. There we go, so now it's one and then the other. The radius times 0 0.03 plus radius times 0 0.06. Okay, now we got shapes coming in. Well, they're not animating, but at least we're getting shapes kind of, you know, aligned with, with uh, what we're trying to make. Our so radius. Oh, uh, maybe just do R times 1.25. R, just do R. I guess that, that works okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's go back. We made this color palette, so now we can get it. And now we can set the color here to be palette I percent palette length. And we can do the stroke equals palette dot stroke. So now we've got, you know, we got these kind of basic shapes. This is kind of interesting, starting to turn into something. I want to make sure that there's enough space for the um, items to live. X, I'm going to also reduce the width here. Um, and I call it spread. I don't like how 
the shapes are perfectly aligned, you know, endpoints and center. So also, why is the star, the star is R to R. Yeah, that's probably better. Um, yeah, so I don't like how perfect that is. Um, we could introduce randomness, or we could... We could re um, we could also just change the spread. <clears throat> That's what I was going to do. So I'm just going to say width times 0.75. And now instead of saying width here, we can just say spread, spread. So now it's kind of like inside a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I actually don't like that stroke though, huh? Also, that that is not a very indicative um, magenta of this. 255, 65, 175 palette. 255, 65, 175. Okay, when this refreshes, that'll be a, <clears throat> a, more, a better color. And I'm also going to turn off the stroke. I don't like the stroke here. I like the stroke on white. OK. OK. And so now we want these to animate in with the line instead of just showing up uh, on play. Let's see. So maybe first they should be invisible. So the opacity I'm going to set to zero. And then as the items come in, maybe they also kind of, we've set a Y position for them, but maybe they start at zero and they move to that Y position. And we say like, uh, we can add a variable to it, like entity dot um, dest Y equals Y. And so now we can s basically like linearly interpolate from the origin to Y. And we kind of want these to come in one after another. So we're going to go for, we're going to go through our shapes. Um, our shape is shapes I. And for each shape, we want to increase the opacity. Um, but we're going to need a, like a, I'm going to call it just T right now. <clears throat> Every shape needs T. Don't you just love T? Um, no, uh, but seriously. OK, every shape needs a T value. And that T value is going to determine like when the opacity comes in. It'll be kind of that staggeredness. It'll be based on a percentage value that we calculate. And I can turn off the search bar. Oops. Right. Uh, no more searching. Thank you. OK. <clears throat> so we have this T that's going to be progress plus a delay. And the delay is going to be the percentage Um, 
Yeah, times 0 0.1 maybe. So, and then we'll just say, for now, we'll just like, let's look at the opacity. Shape dot opacity equals T. Um, okay, let's see what that does. Okay, so this progress, we kind of want to match this sense of the ending. Um, and the shape dot position dot y equals uh, lerp zero shape dot dest y t. We're going to give it the same value. And the lerp function is you take a start and an end and a value to kind of blend between the two. And the t, that t value is the blend that changes. So let's say end minus start t times plus start. And so now these animate in. It's pretty slow, but it's getting there. 1237, we got, oh, I should have made on the uh, live stream like a, countdown timer next next one I'll add a, I'll have to add a countdown timer oh my god also I'm noticing it's pretty hot today in New York City I mean comparatively and our apartment is just scorching right now <clears throat> I apologize for the sweat drops okay so I need to write this down, but we want to partition kind of like we have this chunk um, that the line animates in, and then we have a chunk that one shape goes in, and then a chunk the next shape, and then a chunk the next shape. And uh, oh, there's Evan. Wow, nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by, Evan. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, we need to kind of create this kind of ending value. Not the ending value itself, but a value that's kind of partitioned um, for this T value here. And so that was kind of, we multiplied this by a lot. This should actually be minus times 10. And the delay should also be progress is times 10. Maybe the. Uh, I think I did it the opposite. When in doubt, you just kind of like switch, switch your components and. Uh, see what happens. Okay, so now let's play. Okay, so uh, I got to clamp the T. It's the first thing that I noticed, which is an easy one. Um, this is how you do it in JavaScript in one line. Okay, let's see now. Okay, so they kind of stagger in, but they're, it's like pretty quick. Um, also, wanna get a, I want to add a lot of rotation to this to make them like feel like they spin in, I think would be cool, and like uh, kind of quickly. But once we have this, we can basically like replicate it a bunch and they'll place all over the screen, so that's kind of cool. Um, That's actually like my favorite part of programming is you can basically write a little thing and then just like replicate it and kind of see what the the changes are, patterns that are that kind of come out of it. Okay, but this delay was too short. 
So maybe let's increase that. This. Okay, that was closer. So the delay, maybe 0.2. So that's close enough. I, I think I want to add some like easing curves to this, which are on GitHub. Uh, I have a gist somewhere that's just like a map of easing curves. I don't know why I didn't add this um, somewhere. These are the Penner easing equations. Um, and I'll add these as a new script. I'll just call it easing, edit, paste. So these come in. Um, I just, I guess I just set it on the root document. Um, so I'll refresh the page so to make sure that that script is loaded and available to us. So when I refresh, here we go. There's a, oh shoot, there's an unidentified, there's an error. Everything seems to run so far. Uh, I guess it's okay. I don't know. This is a new project, the, the Frame.js library is in beta, so... You get a lot of red text, that, that's okay though. <clears throat> um, okay, so now we should be able to access easing. Oh, what did I, wait, what's it called? Easing, root.easing, window. Oh, it's not there. Uh-oh, um, okay, I'm just gonna change a little bit of this code. Funk, swing, quadratic, cubic. Just say resources.set easing, easing, easing. Okay. Oh, we don't need root. Um, no conflict. Okay, there's no root. There's, okay, so now if I refresh. Still an unexpected identifier. Hmm. It's probably in this easing. Whoa. Yeah, there's something in this easing that is not happy. Uh oh. Let's put this in a JavaScript validator. This will tell us where the error is. Did it validate? Oh, uh, call it line 33. Uh, 33 cubic. Oh, it's missing a comma after cubic. Wow. That's weird. Why would I have done that? Okay, that's saved. Okay, now we're good. It's Okay. Okay, now we should be able to get easing. And I'm just going to console log to make sure that it's there. Okay, yeah, here's this object. This easing object is basically. Um, like a map of different functions to create different kinds of animations. So I'm going to add the um, how do you guys want? I think it should maybe 
back in, back out, I mean. D T B C D. This is I'm I'm showing my rustiness here. I haven't looked at this in six years. So I just want to fix this. And also ah, current time. Start value, end value, duration. That's what the TCBD means. Okay, so we're going to call, we want these to have an easing curve. Um, So, whoop. I'm going to comment out this t, and I'm going to say var t equals easing dot back dot out. And now this requires a current time, which is progress, and a start value which is zero, an end value, which is one, and a duration, which will be uh, 0 0.1. And so now it won't kind of fade in differently, but it should at least back in. So now it, it backed in and it got too big. <laughs> we just need to um, cap it like we did here. the okay so we cap the T there and I'll just I'll keep this and keep this and say this and now let's see okay that happened really fast but we're getting somewhere so okay progress minus delay times 10 we can just say progress minus delay now. There we go. Now they animate in. Whew. I had, for a moment I was like, oh geez, what am I what am I even doing? <laughs> you guys are like, what is what is this guy doing? Um Okay. So I think the delay be a little tighter and maybe the animate in should be a little longer what do you guys think i mean, actually the delay was good huh okay not 25 but yeah it's like just under 0.2 there we go. Okay, now I feel like these should rotate. Um, I'm just gonna add like a fixed amount each time. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, I think it's, it's got the right idea, but it doesn't look that cool. Also, the circles don't show <laughs> rotation at all, so maybe that's problematic. Maybe we should change those to something else from our reference doc. Um, maybe they have kind of like a cross in the center, or they could be an arc. I think an arc, 2JS has an arc 
think it's an arc. Um, yeah, arc segment. Arcs and arc segments. Two dot arc equals. Oh no, arc equals. Um, function arc. I don't remember how this code builds anymore, so we can just look at it in the console. Okay, so there's arc segment. Arc segment, okay, takes all these values. Okay, so let's, whoa. Uh, arc segment, okay, wait. Okay, it takes an OX, OY. Roughly, let's go back to our animation here. Oh, there's some more people. Let's say hi to them real quick. Catch my breath and get some. Get some water. Um, okay, let's <clears throat> change the circle to an arc. Entity equals new two dot arc segment, and it takes a x y an inner radius, so it's pretty similar to the star. An outer radius, uh, inner radius, outer radius, start angle, end angle, start angle, end angle which we'll just make right now. We'll say math.random times math.pi and then var end angle equals start angle plus math.random times math.pi. And now, okay, there. Here we have arcs. Oh, those arcs are pretty big. Um, we also got an error, but I don't think that's an error we need to worry about. I think this radius should be times 0.5 and R like that. Yeah, okay. We got, we got some variation here. It's starting to look like a lot of loading anime, loading bar animations, but Maybe we can clean that up later. <clears throat> um, we should maybe give each entity a different velocity for their rotation. So I'll just say equals math.random. And now in the rotation, we can say plus equals entity.velocity. Oh, sorry, I mean shape.velocity. Looking at the entity and being like, oh, what? Okay, and so now, oh, that's really fast. <laughs> Let's slow that down a little bit. The velocity, maybe times 0.2. Okay, so now we got, we got a shape for that. I think it's like kind of interesting. I think the velocity should maybe start fast and then slow down to nothing instead. So I'll keep it math.random, but then here we'll say shape.velocity plus, e well, minus equals shape.velocity times 0 0.1. And so now it'll always be like um, reducing down to zero. And when it gets to zero, it'll stay at zero. So, uh, that velocity did not stop, did it? Shape of velocity minus equals, sh oh, not m minus, but times. There we go. It's a little bit too fast, but.
mount's too slow. <laughs> it's like typical. Is that Little Red Riding Hood? No, wait. The the three bears and the punch. My my porridge is too hot. My porridge is too cold. <sighs> yeah, I could maybe even be faster than that. This is gonna be interesting to see how it renders like this. Um, yeah, not totally sure how that's gonna work, but it's cool. Um, times 0 0.5 plus times 0 0.25. Okay. Okay, so now we have kind of this component that we can use a lot. And it kind of like goes with the downbeat, the da 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 So I'm gonna move this renderer down to layer 10. And this basically just makes sure that the drawing is drawing. And we're gonna make like a lot of these, the same way that when I like move backwards and you can see a lot, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna make a lot of these here and I think I'm actually I'm gonna keep them all one color because as we so we have this component but then we can change the component as we see kind of more coming in and so when I play this so in about kind of its first two seconds the guitar plays So it's kind of like every every one of these. Oh, let me zoom in a little bit more so we can see. So every every kind of like right around here, we want to basically duplicate this. And so now we'll have two, I think, come on screen. Yeah. And so now this is how we're gonna magically um, have a bunch of stuff. It's a little bit earlier, huh? Okay. And this part, unfortunately, needs to be replicated a lot manually. Frame.js is now oh, yeah okay see this is starting to get somewhere we need um an animation out for these we need something to fade out <clears throat> um what do you guys think Maybe we'll find some inspiration. So let's let's see how these are actually animated. Kind of weird meta streaming on YouTube, watching YouTube videos. Oh. Uh, some reason the sound isn't playing, <clears throat> but this is kind of what the visual look is. That smear is pretty cool. Yeah, I think, um, oh, I haven't muted. There we go. So obviously it's like a totally different genre of music than what we're visualizing, but I love those little dots. Maybe there's oh, some of for inspiration for how to like fade these out or animate these out, I mean. I guess we'll just we'll just fade them for now. 
Um, and we can basically do the same thing that we did. We'll just say t, and we can do a, a different easing algorithm. We'll do, I'll just, I'll just keep it out for now. <clears throat> um, but instead of going from 0 to 1, we're going to go to 1 to 0. It'll be 0 0.2 again. And um, oh wait, but we're setting the opacity here to that. I think we're just gonna have to use an if statement. So if progress is less than 0 0.5, we'll kind of run the set of code. This is basically like the start, the animate in, I'll add a little comment. And else will be the animate out. And we'll just do the opacity for now. And this will be, so it'll be progress minus 0 0.5. And we could have it, I guess, maybe 3 quarters of the way in. Um, We'll have it. We'll have it fade out, and we can have it take 0.25 to finish. And let's see if that does the trick for us. Okay, that did not. <laughs> that did not run. That's okay. Let's console it out here progress, make sure that this statement is running. Okay, it is for one of the items. Um, and let's see. Oh, because we're going from one to zero, not zero to one. So that's different. Let's just make t as a negative number, that's okay. We'll clamp it before we do the easing. It's probably safer for the overall animation. And now, So shape dot opacity equals t. So this t is just not. I guess we just have to reverse it. We'll do zero to one, but we'll do one minus t here, and this will take us from one to zero instead of zero to one. Let me just comment this out to make sure I'm kind of like seeing a lot of different errors happening at the same time now, so. Okay, so fades in, but maybe needs a little bit more time. So give it to 0 0.66 to finish the animation. And the rotation is the thing that we can keep, regardless of if it's animating in or out. Thank you. 
So what kind of like weirds me out, I'm going to just disable this last one and this second one, <clears throat> is that the position kind of flies away. And I guess that's because we're doing the max and min beforehand instead of afterwards. Okay, there we go. And now, let's try this opacity. Nope, and it started there, but it didn't. Oh, because we, we can't use back, we have to use like sinusoidal or circular. Oh, there's no out for this one that I made. Let's see. What did I say? Easing. Wing, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic, sine. Oh, it's just sine. Okay. Cool. Another thing that I noticed is that for the velocity. Where do we set the velocity? Here, I'm going to subtract minus 0.5 and then multiply by 2. And this will make it so that it can go either direction instead of just always spinning to the right. Cool. And now I also want to, let's see, this calculation, I'm going to copy out, I'm going to call it the the var fade out. Um, it's going to allow us to not have to calculate this three times a, a frame, but also we're going to use it to fade out the line. And so the line, we'll do the line dot beginning equals the fade out. So now it'll animate in, stay, and then animate out and fade out. And I just want to make sure, I guess we're making new things every time. I'm a little bit worried about the memory footprint right now because we're making so many objects, but I guess if it's wor working, that's what the beefy, beefy computer is for. I'm just gonna refresh it just to see. Um, uh oh, T is not defined, so let's look in T. I forgot to. This needs to change to fade out. Okay, refresh. Nice. All right, there we go. So now let's enable these and just let's see how it all works together. Some reason the fade out didn't happen. Oh shoot. Um oh man. Um okay, so we're making these objects every now this is this is like a little wrinkle of frame.js. Every all the code that we kind of access here, <clears throat> this code is run once, um, once, yeah, once. <laughs> um, 
And so it's actually shared between each of these three clips. And um, what we need to do is kind of, oh shoot, like create the reference for the shapes to run on their own um, like this wouldn't be a problem if they, I guess they could disappear before they re-enter. And compositionally that kind of makes sense too because this overlapping like doesn't work very well. So maybe let's, let's do that. Um, we're gonna have to change some of the timing, but we'll make this 22 seconds. I'll disable these. It's a good learning experiment. Okay, so now this is going to happen really fast. So the, the delay maybe we need to increase for each one. And this needs to be maybe like... Uh, maybe we don't even have this opacity fade out, the fade out part. Um, this is starting, we're starting to get into the like period of the making process where GitHub and like repositories are really helpful when you like have version control and you can look back at different commits and all this stuff because now we're like, okay, we're just gonna like delete code that we made in the last 10 minutes and just like forget about that. Um, and we just gotta roll with it because that's that's kind of how the the rules are set up for this challenge. Um, okay, let's just see that this plays. Okay, yes, but now we just need to increase the delay. Maybe increase it even more, or maybe not increase the delay, but increase the duration yeah I think that's a little bit better yeah okay so and then geez the next one starts so soon what we're at 21.44 so this would be 21.44. So we're gonna have to adjust that timing again. Um, maybe 0. 0.6, 0. 0.6. Okay, let's, so this is now 1.44, 21.45 plus 1.44. Oh, that doesn't, uh, <laughs> addition doesn't work. Okay, that's cool. 21.45 plus 1.44, 22.9, um, 22.9, Twenty-two point nine. So this one is twenty-three and twenty-three point four four, or sorry, twenty-four point four four. Okay, let's enable these, and now let's kind of see what we got here. All right, so now this is like starting to come together. Ah, Chris stopped by. Let's see, let's wave to Chris real quick. Um, okay, so now we have two components. We need to lay these out over the course of, how long does this last?
So at 50 seconds is when the vocals come in. At 1.48, they kind of, <clears throat> the section ends to a, a different section. So change to section two, or I guess that's section three. It's the crescendo. Um, and, um, okay, so we need to basically like have this, um, flow, I guess, is like the best way to describe it. These three kind of notes coming in, we need to replicate this a bunch. <clears throat> and uh, the way that I would do this before was in here, you'd have access to the player, but you don't because this is in ES6 modules format, or not ES6 modules, but it's like in a, these are in a module format. Here, I'll increase the size of this so you guys can see. So this module is basically not exposed. Um, and we need to expose it get state, set state. Yeah, so I'm just gonna expose the editor here. I, th I think it's the editor. Oh no, maybe it's the timeline. I'm gonna expose the window, the editor and the timeline. I'm gonna hit save, I'm gonna refresh the page here. And this is this is oh, wow. This is so meta. Um, this is the this is the code that runs this editor environment. So now we have the editor here. Yeah, we've got a config, duration, effects, the player, resources, scripts. Yeah, see in here the scripts is is what we want. There's a timeline we want to add. Okay, see this is this add animation is what we want. So I'm gonna go into the code and I'm gonna look for basically this duplicate function. Whoa. And <laughs> um not in 3JS. Ah, okay, see here we go. In the editor. Duplicate animation. This duplicate animation says animation, animation.end, animation.start, the duplicate animation, the start, the offset, the layer. So this this is this, this function is basically what we want to duplicate. And the animation that we want to duplicate is this, the melodic horizon. So, it's in timeline.animations, we have the fourth one, zero, one, two, three, four. So, or the fifth item, the fourth, the ID is four. So we wanna duplicate that one, and the offset is the end minus the start. Offset is the start minus the end. Yeah, so instead of doing that, we're going to run this ourselves. And can, do we have, oh shoot, but we don't have, um, here, I'll, I'll just change the, <laughs> I'll change the code. We'll, we'll give our own offset, basically. Um, because 
we want this to happen every 1.44 seconds. Write that down. Oh, actually, pff, remove, remove. We can just duplicate this, and this should work correctly. And so I just want to write a script that duplicates this until we get to 148. And this we probably want to have on higher ground here, um, 20, 21.44, and uh, so what I could do is just trigger that duplicate function, so I'll say editor dot I won't change this. Editor dot duplicate animation with an animation, and I will say the animation equals editor dot timeline dot animations. We said it was the fourth index, so we're going to duplicate that. and hit run. And so now we saw that this duplicated. <clears throat> and so I'm just gonna basically just run this a few times. I'm gonna say, we're gonna run it 10 times. And Var i equals zero i less than ten i plus plus. And uh, oh shoot! I just did that, but it made it a bunch all in the same place. I need to um. I need to remove. I need to take the last, oh jeez, I need to take the last one in the list every time. Okay, learning on the job here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to duplicate this. So now we have this duplicated one. And now when I go into editor, timeline, animations, we should see that this last one, the five, is the melodic horizon. So now I can say four by i equals zero, i less than ten, i plus plus. Uh, var animation equals editor dot timeline dot animations editor dot timeline dot animations dot length minus one to get the last one and now we can say editor dot duplicate animation animation and finish it off with the curly brace just finish our for statement and then there now we got ten now I can say up and return, and we got 10 more, up, return, 10 more, and we're just gonna go until 148. And here's the magic. This is the magic that's happening. Okay, so now we're at 148, we'll delete this last one. And now we have our second component in. So let's, uh, let's play that back and see what we have so far. Oh, and of course it didn't work. Uh-oh. It froze. Did it error? Let's refresh this, let's see. First one plays. 
second one doesn't play. I wonder if it's because it's... It needs a space between. Oh, jeez, Louise. Um, so, hmm. we need. So if this was 21.45, would it be okay? Oh, the offset needs to be just one off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, we're, I'm gonna export this and copy it. I'm going to paste it because we don't need all of these melodic horizons up into the 106 seconds. And I'm going to bring in. Um, I got all these melodic horizons we made magically. I'm going to delete all the extra melodic horizons. I'm going to save this into our Frame.js projects, examples, examples, yeah, it's a JSON, so we'll just call this mallow.json. And now we can load import in a new file, which is the file we just saved. Examples, mallow.json. And so now you see we removed all those extra melody, melodic horizons. Um, so what we want to do is in the editor here in this duplicate, the start is going to be an offset plus 01. It's just a simple... Simple addition so that we get a little bit of spacing in between. And so now when I select this, I just want to make sure editor timeline animations is our last animation, the melodic horizon, it is. So now we can run this again. And let's let's double check now to make sure that this runs correctly. It still doesn't. Why didn't that work? Okay, I'm going to import in the mallow JSON. And let's see. Maybe this is too small. Maybe it needs to be 0.1. And this needs to be point. Point four, and so then we would add O four here. Let's make it clean O five. I will say I will just log here to know that we changed duplicate. Okay, I'm going to select one and just check. So that didn't update cache is disabled okay so now I think there's a space okay now it's working and now I can run this function All right, and so now we can just run it again, run it again, run it again, all the way to that 148, right here. Okay, so we'll remove the last one. 
And there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna refresh the page. Let's see what we got. All right, this is starting to have some tidbits of something interesting. You can hear that the song is like building up. So we need to add more stuff to this. And also there's, yeah, the vocals that come in that I think is nice. The drums just came in. Having something that's, what's the right way to describe it, like, yeah, something more that, that's like uh, this audio reactive element here, kind of the mix of the two of like choreographed with the audio reactive, I think can be really nice. Um, the lyrics will be really nice. I think the last thing, we get a nice message from Elisa to like, don't forget to take breaks and blink. Um, I actually, I saw um, over the summer, I got some new glasses and I got a uh, eye exam at the optometrist. And they told me that my, not my blinking specifically was a problem, but that my tear ducts don't produce enough tears and so my eyes are often dry so yes I do need to blink more and take breaks um, I think uh, this is maybe a good moment for me to take a break I'll walk the dog I'll kind of put the music back on we'll reconnect at 2 um, p.m. Eastern time so that's in half an hour about um, I'm just opening up some seaweed um, but yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think there's still some tweaking that needs to be done. Well, the one thing that I wanted to share here that, so what's really cool is that these, we made a bunch of clips and they all kind of play the same content, but each one is kind of different. And so the thing is now when you, um, edit this code that updates for all of them. Um, so if we, for instance, decided to get rid of polygons um, and change them to something else, like uh, maybe maybe we could find some more kind of shapes that are more relevant, oops, that are more relevant to um, the graphics here. Maybe like these ones. That's a cool shape. That's a cool shape. This wiggly line, I think is cool. Actually, we need to have a lot of these wiggly lines. This is probably, that's probably like easy win. Um, to add these shapes, these shapes here, these are, these are really nice shapes. I think maybe we have to go in and generate Kind of our own shapes for this but we have at least the choreography down to play it play through it and so if we change stuff here it'll change it for all all these clips that we just made um so that's that's pretty cool and it's also really easy to you know if we duplicate this mallow clip let's say um you know we duplicate it and then maybe let's listen here when the drums come back in yeah maybe at like 51 so we bring the mallow comes in at 51 to 148 
see now we have kind of the two elements living together. So we're gonna like build this up. Um, anyways, that's it for now. I'm gonna grab a quick bite and walk the dog. Um, thank you so much for joining so far. Uh, everybody that stopped by. And um, yeah, we'll meet again. Well, here, let me wave and you can see like the, f the full preview of uh, my nice white apartment wall. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll reconvene in about an hour. The stream will still be on. I will just um, go to this kind of like waiting screen that just cycles between the different uh, information about, about Mallow and the schedule today. And yeah, we got three more hours to kind of add some more animations and kind of compose them in a place and then basically render this out and try to try to see how it goes. I think the last thing I'll mention is just that listening to the song, I think it's about two forty or three minutes, it kind of the crescendo dies. And so maybe that's really the point at which we kind of like, um, you know, focus on trying to get a full thing instead of doing the full five minutes because five minutes is, is pretty long. And uh, yeah, talk to you guys soon. Okay.
All right. <clears throat> and we're back. Man, it is a beautiful day outside in New York City. Um, <clears throat> just messaging everybody that we're back in the chat. And uh, yeah, we've made, we've made some progress. About halfway done, at least in terms of the hours that we're, I'm allotting to make this. So <clears throat> we have a long way to go, but um, we got a good start. Um, let's let's dig back in. Let's see where were we? Um, we have kind of this intro blob mallow animation, and then we have kind of this uh, melodic harmony. I think was the, what we called it. Um, that comes in frequently. And I was thinking <clears throat> um, it would be nice to refine the melodic harmony a little bit so that it kind of fit a little bit more the aesthetic of um, the cover art. I think this is a, it's such a good frame of reference. And I think there's also an element to kind of take the comic book style framing um, to to create different frames. So I think I I think we should try to make at least one scene that's kind of like this, and I think we can do that with this. Uh, I'm going to use the pen tool here. This this uh, this frame right here. Um, I think we can make some objects falling or maybe rising, I'm not sure. And um, we can use the mask feature in 2JS to basically like compartmentalize that into um, a frame. I think that would be a cool thing to go for. <clears throat> I think another one that I mentioned before is, is just kind of doing these squiggles, making the random squiggles kind of all over, I think is definitely um, doable, reminds me of Patatap, so it's easy sine wave to kind of like replicate. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's another one that could be really cool. Um, and then the last one is type. In general, we could try to introduce some of the um, lyrics from the song. Um, but let's let's start with um, just kind of this this framing and and see see where we get. Um, so yeah, let's let's go back here. <clears throat> going to um, make a new a new animation and we're going to import to and let's let's look again at these shapes wonder is there I'm thinking like it would be nice to be able to recreate <clears throat> some of these in code. And uh, this one we definitely could. I mean, all of them we, we could. Um, so, so let's try to do that. Let's, let's try to create a, like a, a random shape generator um, that has them kind of falling. The animation is that they fall from the sky. There's not anything specifically tied to the progress. So it's kind of like a nice nice effect with that. I think the other thing that's nice about this is that maybe, I can't remember if this was, how this was printed originally, if it was a Rhizo or what, um, but there's not really any kind of like different opacities or anything. So maybe it doesn't make sense to do a fade out um, like we had before. And um, just thinking like, 
out loud, how can we kind of layer these different colors and shapes to kind of give the same effect? Um, I think one is that we could try to, yeah. I wonder, maybe we even kind of like trace one of these and try to um, recreate this as a, as a scene almost, you know? I think that that could be cool, and you could just like blow the the yellow up. Um, okay. Anyways, so yeah, let's let's recreate this scene. Then we'll then we'll do this one, and kind of do the lines, and we'll we'll go from there. That'll be three things that we could try to tackle that kind of give these different foreground, middle ground, background depths um, to our project. And um, <clears throat> yeah, will definitely give us plenty, plenty to work with. Um, okay, so this random shape generator. Let's see. There's maybe like a dozen shapes, so we'll have an amount of let's say twenty, and um, we'll have a list. We'll call it shapes, and for these twenty. Um, we'll make a new path <clears throat> and give them a set of points and we'll kind of basically um, it will be closed and we'll kind of randomly set if it's curved or not um, is closed is always true is curved is we can do the same if math dot random is greater than 0 0.5 so kind of randomly some will be curved some won't be and for the points we will <clears throat> we'll need to count how many points will they have you know some of these some of these have a few points some have a lot looks like maybe kind of want always an uneven number we always want at least maybe seven. <clears throat> so it could be anywhere from seven to maybe 19. So we'll do math.random times um, what is 19 minus seven? That's 12 plus seven. And we will floor this to make sure that it's an even number or like an integer round number <clears throat> and now we can do our points uh, we're gonna make a new list count j plus plus and let's kind of see like what are the characteristics here of these kind of shapes what I see is something that you know has a variable width and height Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's square, sometimes it's narrow. And it always kind of uh, has this stagger kind of element, whether it's curved or not. And so there's kind of like bulges. And I think um, the way we can do that is through this, this same kind of like even odd staggering that we, that we did in the other um, animation. So um, we're going to get the percentage as usual um, and <clears throat> that percentage will help us get a theta uh, percentage times math up, pi times 2 and we ultimately want to generate anchor points that take an x and a y and we'll push those anchors here and we'll save our x equals math dot cosine theta var y equals math dot sine theta and so this i think is also an element of kind of uh change or distribution there's like you know, one, one thing that I 
don't really like about this animation clip that we made is that it's just so clean and symmetrical. And these are, you know, none of these are clean and symmetrical shapes. So I think um, it would be nice It would be nice to uh, have that more kind of like hand-drawn organic feel. And the way that we can do that is by adding randomness. Or at least <clears throat> uh, try to simulate it. It won't be perfect. Um, here we're going to multiply this by the width and the height, um, which will say... I'm gonna also silence my phone so I'm not bothered by New York Times articles and stuff. Um, we'll just give the width and height fixed numbers for now. <clears throat> and we will um, add these all to a group. Group dot add shape. And at the start, we'll add the group to the scene. And at the end, we'll also remove the group. So you won't see it. And um, so these also have an origin or like where the object is placed. Position dot y equals math dot random times two dot height. <clears throat> and I think some of this we can, a lot of this actually we should do in the start function. As you can see, like a bunch of different ovals just popped in. Some of them are curved, some of them are not curved. And this is this is kind of like a, a cool a cool effect that we have. Um, I'm going to call this R X and R Y. We're going to have like different radiuses for each one. So the R X will be the width <clears throat> plus some amount of randomness. Uh, math times math.random times maybe like 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75. So collectively it'll make one, but it could be a lot less than one. Maybe we should just increase this even more. And we'll do the same with the y. <clears throat> and by just doing random for each of these we kind of already get some weird interesting kind of like cross shapes um you know we could simply also just change the color um we have the palette var palette equals resources dot get palette And we'll just say palette zero for now. <clears throat> um, that's the first entry in the palette, which I think is the yellow. And we'll also give the shape dot stroke equals palette dot stroke to give it that blue. <clears throat> and let's just refresh and see what we got right now. So yeah, we've got kind of this interesting <laughs> amalgamation of weird shapes. I think we can control this a little bit by, <clears throat> we can control this a little bit by controlling this even odd factor of the width and the height on the randomness. So we're kind of saying this is the width and the height, but we could also say that the width is actually, um, you know, looking at that modulo 
So every other one we can say is the width, and but sometimes it's width times 0.5, and we can say the same with the height. Um, and so this kind of creates that staggeredness more, and it kind of it kind of works. If we look back here, you know. I think the main thing is just that this is too big. <clears throat> this could be like half. So now we have, yeah. I think another thing is that these are these are pretty evenly spaced. There's not a lot of overlap that happens in this work in general. I love how that blue is the shadow. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, maybe let's make this pink. Let's make sure that this is pink. So yeah, I think there's maybe something in the overlap that we could address. There's something in the blobbiness that we could address. Maybe this should be like, should always kind of like pretty different. So now it's kind of like more like a movie aspect ratio. It's much wider than it is high. Um, I think we could even make this more extreme. And maybe even randomize it. Well, we're already randomizing the width and the height, so that's, that's maybe a bit too much. What I don't like is the variation of like there's really small ones and then really big ones and there's not much in between. <clears throat> and I think we can get around that. It's a good way to get around that. I guess because each one is random, it's we could try to use sine, we could try to use a Gaussian or like a noise function. But um I'm actually feeling like pretty okay about the Rx and R. Oh well. We could have this be width and height, but we <clears throat> add a radius. And the radius is the thing that, that's way it's equal. Um, so I'll just say, Bar radius equals I percent two. And this is that stagger function. And I can, I'll say one. Or math dot random times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So this now is kind of like a more, I mean, not, it's not super complex, but it is a little bit more complex than we had before. And now the W, well, this is just width and height. So now we have kind of, yeah, a little bit more kind of blobby variety we could maybe increase this to make it more extreme, the difference, and reduce the amount to maybe just a dozen. So now they're kind of like generally the same size, which I think is nice. And let's kind of look back. We got we got some that are like this and that. I think what we're kind of missing is like that, just like really st 
standard. Oh, let's make this times. There, this one's really nice. This kind of blobby shape. And let's also space these out to be more um, succinct. So instead of randomly placing them, let's do a column and a row. So now the column would be, oops, that would be up here. Column is I percent four, and the row is I divided by four, math dot four, and this is like a different way to you're going to divide by 4 and multiply by, you know, 2 dot width. So now we kind of, we add 0 0.5 to kind of get it in the middle. And here we'll divide by 4 and also add 0 0.5 and multiply by 2 dot height to kind of get it height-wise in the right place. Okay, so now we get kind of like a sense of what these objects are. And they're all pretty similar but different. <laughs> it's kind of be the only way I feel like I could describe it. Um, I feel like maybe this should just be math.random. We get, we get some really extreme kind of elements here, which, you know, is kind of similar to, uh, oh, no, like this one over here. So, okay, maybe not that strong, but pretty strong. All right. This, uh, the ones that are not so interesting. The ones that are not, I think we should just have all of them like this. The ones that are always one are just kind of like less interesting. Here we go. So here we got some weird kind of blobby shapes. These do have some curves, but actually there's not a lot of curved ones. So let's also turn off the curved. Let's just say false. So now we've got a lot of different jagged shapes. And yeah, I think this is starting to resemble some elements. Here, there is like a hit of white that I think is nice from the off print, the way that it was like offset print, that would be cool to introduce somehow. Um, But also, let's just look what this looks like without a stroke. Yeah, I don't know. Looks good with the stroke. I think it looks better with the stroke. It's a good decision by, uh, what was her name? Chu Yi. Okay. Okay, so let's make these fall. So the group basically we will just iterate through all the shapes and just add uh, to their Y position. It's a pretty simple, simple function. 
we could add a velocity each time so they fall at different rates. They have a different um, shape dot velocity equals math dot random shape dot rotation speed r speed equals math dot random minus 0 0.5. So we can say shape dot velocity shape dot our uh, rotation plus equals shape dot r speed and then we just have a ch simple check if shape dot position dot y is greater than two dot height maybe times a little bit so we don't just like take it off screen immediately we'll say shape dot position dot y equals negative two dot height times 0 0.25 so now I think when we play, they should fall. Oh, shapes. I added the shapes to the group, but I didn't add them to the list. And actually, the group keeps a list, so we don't need to have that. We could just say groups.children.length. Sorry, not groups. Group.children.length and group.children here. So now when we play, they're spinning pretty fast and falling pretty slow. So let's change that. Um, the velocity, we will multiply that maybe by three. And they'll always have at least a velocity of one. And then the spinning we can reduce that speed as well, maybe times 0.2. So now let's see. Yeah, this seems more. This looks more like, uh, yeah, they're falling. It's kind of like leaves, but like they don't really look like leaves. Leaves kind of have that. Swift kind of fall. Um, so I wonder is there. Yeah, I mean, that is just like a. It's kind of more of a physics thing that I don't really want to dig, dive into today. Only because I've been doing a, a lot of physics stuff for work, work projects recently. Um, and also it adds complexity. I tend to get really caught up in the details of the physics simulation and we're already at 240. We gotta get going. Um, so I think this is great. <clears throat> I think the thing that we can add to this that'll make it even better is we can add a dark background. So, okay, actually shoot, I do need this shapes list. Because to the group, I'm gonna add a similar backdrop to this. But I'm going to make it darker. Am I going to do that? <clears throat> Actually, yeah. We can just do a, a simple rectangle. Um, that's two dot width over two. 2.height over 2, 2.width, 2 2.height, 2 rec dot no stroke, rec dot fill equals RGB, that's just black, and rec dot opacity equals 0 0.2, group dot add rect. And, oh, unexpected token.
Yeah, so that'll make it darker a good amount, which is great. But then we're going to, on the start here, we'll do rect.position.x equals 2 dot width. Rect.position.y equals 2 dot height over 2. And why doesn't that, uh, why didn't that rect center? That rect is not centering. This will be, oh, we gotta call this something. Uh, falling objects. Okay, rec dot width equals two dot width, rec dot height equals two dot height. The rectangle, what is its width? Five, 12. Oh, it doesn't seem right. Oh. Zero. Rect dot position dot x position dot y two dot height. It's five twelve by five twelve. Okay, just trying to put this in the right, rect in the right position. I don't, I'm not totally sure what's going on right now. The width and height seem correct, but the position doesn't seem right. And I'm not getting any errors. Gonna log the values to see. I mean, everything looks fine. New two dot rectangle. Maybe I need to use translation. I forget. This, this could be an error. It's, nope. Wow, we added it. We added it here and it was fine. So what did, what are we doing differently? Uh, we're just doing position.set. Nothing that weird. No stroke, fill, black, opacity, 0 0.2, and group dot add rect. And then in the start function, we'll say all of those things. We'll see them after adding them. 
can be a... Wow, I'm really confused by this. Is wrecked defined somewhere else? No. Call it backdrop. Does it change anything? This is kind of the debug process at its finest. It's like absolute confusion. No understanding of the diagnosis. Um, Can also just change the group dot position dot x to be two dot width over two and the group dot position dot y equals two dot height over two on the start. And so now everything's scooted over, which you know makes sense. Um, and we can just do call minus equals two dot width over two row minus equals two dot height over two. Rec dot width equals two dot width. Oh, sorry, not rect backdrop. See, now it works. Okay. So now we got that, we've got that as a darker scene. I'm gonna push all of these rows back by the full height so you can't see them when they first play. And then as it plays out, they'll fall in. Wait, but what I need to do is check to see if two dot height now is Minus two dot main minus group dot position dot y. This is getting real ugly. But at least it falls. They fall in kind of as expected here and they come back to the top and they fall through. I think if we go back to this, let's look at some styles that we can pull that don't kind of clash with the other colors that we're using perhaps. For here we could just use the white. This is gray and pink, but maybe here we could use the green. Are we using the green for the... Yeah, there we are using the green. The yellow, the pink, and the green. Um, so let's use the white. the palette and the white is palette so we're gonna add all of these as just straight colors as well I'll just call this red um, is palette one palette yellow is palette zero yellow red palette green equals palette um, two, 
palette white equals palette three. Palette gray equals palette four. And we'll add this as palette five. Okay, so if we go back to our animation here, we can just say instead of this, we can say palette white and refresh. And okay, now they're falling in as white objects. <clears throat> and the next thing that we can do is uh, basically like put a mask on this to frame it so that it only takes up a certain amount of space. And I think this will be a cool element. And we'll call this uh, group resources.set falling objects group. So we'll be able to access this later. I think this is my mistake in the previous animation that we made. Um, was that we were trying to do all the animations in the update loop with the progress. But actually, if we, if we set it as a resource, then we can access it, access a specific component later and make a little animation out of it, kind of like below. So what I mean exactly, well, let's go here. I'm going to extend this. And we're going to make this, they're gonna fall, but we're gonna give them a mask so that they don't fall everywhere. And I think this is gonna be like a nice addition to this, to the piece that we have. So our mask is gonna be another rect. The mask you can't see, so it doesn't need any styles. Um, and the way that you apply this is you say group dot mask equals the mask. Um, but I'll set this down here. And if I set this rectangle now to be 0, 0, 50, 50, um, there is a cannot read property. Oh, well, see, this is, I forgot how to use this. Let's go back to the examples. Here's the mask example. How do we use this? Container.mask equals the cursor. Cursor is just a circle. Seems straightforward enough. So maybe let's. Oh, I need to add it. Maybe I think I need to add it. Um, so here I'll do group mask and group dot mask. Yeah. So now we don't have the error. And now, well, we had a lot of errors, so we think we need to refresh it. So now you can see this little square here has our all of our animations that we just made. And in uh, 
in our animation, we'll just expand that to be the full the full width and height for now, like we did here. Let's say mask dot width equals two dot width, mask dot height equals two dot height. And now, for instance, if we change the width here, say group dot mask dot width equals two dot width times one minus progress, it'll start shrinking the space. And you can see that it gets cut off. It's kind of a nice effect. Here, we can kind of look and just like style it a little bit more. I can see, let's see if we can add a, I don't think this will draw. Yeah, no. Um, we can, I need to basically make an additional um, rectangle, which is the outline. The outline will have the same properties, but it'll be, you know, the blue outline with no fill. It's palette dot blue. Um, group dot add backdrop. Group dot add. Not group dot add, but two dot add. Outline. And. Yep. Yep. Outline dot width equals two dot width. Outline dot height equals two dot height. And we can say this is not something that's tied to 2JS, but it's just to, for us to expose later. Group dot outline equals outline. And here we'll have to say group dot outline dot width equals two dot uh, equals group dot mask dot width. And now we have think we should have a, uh, oh, um, let's see, that did not show the outline, where is the outline, outline, two dot add, group mask outline, group position, outline, outline dot width, height, zero, we should see something. Um, width is 281, height is 512. I mean, this seems like pretty normal. Uh, Turn off the mask. Group dot mask. No more group dot mask. We have the mask directly. Okay. So here we can see the mask. Mask is right here. The outline is probably right behind the mask. Which is funny because Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Zero, one, two, three. Four. Oh, it's not blue, it's stroke. Let's make it blue also. I'm starting to lose my edge. 
<laughs> okay. There, you can see it now. <clears throat> and, okay, great. So we can see it, let's set the mask back. Cool, you can see everything. And we'll say outline.position.copygroup.position. Now we have kind of this full frame. There we go. But, you know, this is not obviously how we uh, really see it in the Figma. So let's make it kind of more like this, this kind of frame. How do we make it more like that? It's kind of like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's got a more margin and a padding. Um, so let's, uh, let's do something with that. It could be in the center, but instead of the height, let's see, the outline height being that, let's say it's the outline width times an aspect ratio, which is what, um, 9 over 16. So now we have this height that we expect, outline dot height, outline dot width, and just say, we'll swap this, we'll make the mask the listen to the outline. So let's see. All right, that's starting to look like something interesting. I think what I like about this is that we have something that's fast, we have something that's slow, we have something that's big and not. So um, <clears throat> I think this is all kind of like working together. I think we can maybe make this go all the way to 51. Make this go to 51. And probably wanna do like a fade out at the end here. So we can add like a um, this would be 51, 40, uh, 50. This will be a fade out of the falling objects. Fade out. I'm just going to let's animate out. Falling objects. And here now we can get var group equals resources dot get falling objects. Now we have this uh, reference. And now here we can just simply say group dot opacity equals progress. 
1 minus progress because we're reversing it. And this we can um, actually maybe end not with it going to 0. So we can see outline 2 dot width times 0.9 times progress, but plus is uh, uh, 0 0.9 times progress plus 0.1. Okay, so let's let's take a look at how that ends. All right, that's kind of you know, it's got a lot of variety. Which I think is nice. I think if we take out the pink here and use the pink here, I, th I think that'll be a nice switcheroo of things. Oh, the outline line width is way too high. And we're not going to make these white anymore. We're going to make them red. And here we're going to make these uh, palette I percent palette dot length. So yeah, we're not going to do an I percent palette dot length, but we're going to say color ID, and that that color ID. Is gonna be the same for all the colors. Bar color ID equals colors math dot floor times math dot random times colors dot length. This is gonna select a random color from a colors array that we're gonna make right now. That's gonna be a subset of our palette. So we're going to have a palette. We'll have not the red, but we'll have the green, the yellow, the white, and the gray. So now it should look pretty different. All right. Uh, but we get an error think in the the down down straights one two three fours um, the down straights what is this unexpected token bracket let's see this doesn't seem like a problem anymore got an outline console that I'm going to remove. Okay. Two.remove group, mask, and outline. Okay, so now we're getting rid of everything that we created. That's always good. And maybe let's make this longer, 45, and I'll do a math.pow. We'll make this really extreme. So it'll be really slow fade out. Wait, the fade out didn't happen at all though. What the heck? Um, <laughs> this is the group. I guess it's the children of the group. So.
So I'm just going to iterate through all the children and get the child of each group. Yeah, okay, and we just got to make sure that it's... Uh, uh, we'll do group dot shapes. This doesn't exist yet, but it will in a second. Group dot shapes equals shapes. Mm -hmm. And also in this one, we will do here is the Capacity. We also want to do the outline. We want to fade out the outline. So we'll say group dot outline dot opacity equals opacity also. And okay, we're gonna hard refresh. Okay, it starts. Go here. It's falling. Go here. And I think I think the fade is maybe too strong. This pow. I just the backdrop. I'm gonna do a little cheat. We're gonna set it to black with 0.2 opacity, but we're not gonna change the opacity. And so here now we can just go through all the children and not have a problem. And as this fades out, now it fades nicely. There we go. And now we can add this back in as like a the square root of it. Yeah, maybe this should overlap to 52 a little bit. So we don't have just like clean cuts all the time. Okay, starting to look like a piece now, huh? For some reason, the width is not being respected here. Um, just trying to make sure that the padding is respected. Um, there we go. So orders of operation issue. Okay, I just did save. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we got we got our pink leaves kind of falling. This uh, this didn't work out, these colors that we selected. What's going on here? Let's look at our color palette. Okay, those are real colors. Oh, because this is not color ID, it's colors. It's just the direct color. So we don't need palette color ID, we can just be color. And that should fix that. Yeah, so now each one's a solid color.
so what do you guys think so far? We got <clears throat> seven people here watching or listening in. Uh, Yeah, I'd love, love to get your feedback. I definitely think... Uh, I definitely think we've got something interesting that we can take to the crescendo. I think... Um, I think we need can add, I'm gonna clean my glasses for a second, smudged them. Um, I think uh, for the end, I think it, for the crescendo, it would be cool to add this uh, sculpture. sculpture lady right here. There's something still not satisfying about these black lines. Maybe because they should be gray. I don't know. Maybe they should be round. The line, line cap should be round. Um, Maybe they should also be thinner. Yeah, maybe it's these shapes should be random also. Uh, maybe they should be like this star. But random maybe they should all be a star that's kind of what I'm feeling right now maybe they should all be stars let's change them to stars oh thanks we got a nice comment from my mom mom's no best Yeah, we should do the squiggle lines next. We should do the squiggle lines next. Um, okay, so now it's always stars. Oh, shoot. I need to set the opacity to always be one here. And the start. Group.opacity equals one. Outline.opacity equals one. Um, let's see, okay, so we'll do the squiggles, let me just finish this stars piece, they always have seven, but instead maybe we can randomize what they have, um, so sides. Our sides equals math dot floor math dot random times four five plus five. So now, yeah, now I can have different shapes. Um, the velocities. Lots of honking. We live by Penn Station and the Lincoln Tunnel is right there. So there's lots of, lots of people trying to get out of town. I kind of want to screw up the stars somehow. Maybe we can... Uh, Make them feel just a little bit more organic. You can give them a stroke, which I think would be helpful. 
not entity dot no stroke, but stroke equals palette dot blue. Make sure we got we got the palette. Okay, that's there. And T this I'm gonna do R get feeding quick. Yeah, there's something about star. When I make the star, I think I'm gonna do this function called subdivide, which basically like breaks up however many points and doubles the amount of points. Um, and then you can basically go through those points and uh, we can just like modify them just a little bit. Um, and this happens in the start function, so that's good. So I'll just say um, for var j equals zero, j less than entity dot vertices dot blank j plus plus. Um, and we'll say var v equals entity vertices j. Now we can get the theta from the vertices position. It's so negative vy over negative vx. And basically re push it out with a, just like a little bit of an edge. So we can just say plus equals math dot cosine theta plus equals math dot sine theta times like a random radius random a random rad which is small you know it'll it'll be small And let's see, am I getting any errors? Doesn't seem like it. Do the stars look any different really? Not really. Am I changing them by enough? Probably not. Oh, you know what I can do? I'll get the length of them, right? I think uh, yeah, I can get the okay. Uh, I'm gonna scratch that. So we'll say var l equals v dot length, and var n equals v dot normal y. Uh, and say v dot normalize dot multiply by l times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 and is that going to do it? I need to refresh. Uh, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Why didn't that do anything? Um, yeah, what's the deal? All right, well. We'll table this, let's do the squiggles. And we do three, eight. Sorry. 
Okay. So, the squiggles. See where would be the good point to put it? Maybe somewhere around here. Maybe they slowly kind of start animating in. So that was like about one. Yeah. Yeah, one, one ten. We'll do one ten to kind of two thirty. Okay, so 110, that's 70, 2 minutes and 30 seconds is 150, that seems it's a long amount of time, um, but it should be good. I have written down that 240 is when a... I don't know why I have 240. But yeah, right, right here is... Kind of three minutes is where we could maybe end the piece. 303. I'm going to write that down. We'll end it at 303. And we can also just write at 302. I'll just add an effect called um, volume out, or like a, a audio out. Resolve audio. Resolve. Um, and here we'll get the audio. Our audio equals resources to get audio. Wow, we're already at 3.30. Um, we're, we're running up to the end here. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, we will say here that audio, just say the start volume equals one, audio dot start volume, uh, start volume, equals audio dot volume and we'll say audio dot volume equals get the easing curve easing dot sign dot out one minus progress, or actually we'll do progress at one minus that, times, oh shoot, we need to take the, uh, wait, I, sorry, I got confused here. Let's uh, just easing dot sign dot out and it's the current time the start value is start volume the 
end value is zero. The duration is one. That did not do it. <laughs> Oh, it's just kind of always the same here. The progress is changing from zero to one, but the start value, the end value is not progressing. What if we said zero, one here? That is working. I got louder. So yeah, we'll just say zero to one, one, and we'll just do Save our t equals one minus t times start volume. So that goes from start volume to nothing. I think that should do it. But start volume is already at nothing. So, uh, put this in start. Okay. Why didn't that do anything? Seems like it's doing the correct thing. Audio volume's going down to practically zero. And uh, star volume, audio volume, I guess I should see what star volume is. There it goes. Okay, so we have we have the end. Um, that's squared away. That's great. I'm just gonna just in case. I don't think anything should happen, but in case something does, I'm just gonna export it, save it, so we have at least all of our progress somewhere. Uh, we can close a lot of this stuff. Okay. Um, change that. Okay, so let's take care of these squiggles. This is going to be called squiggles. It's going to be squiggles. I feel like maybe they should move up. Um, and actually, I made this really big, but probably going to be similar to this one where it's like one little animation that we repeat quite a lot. So I'm actually going to shorten this down to 72. And I'll just say, let's see, what kind of music is happening? Kind of similar to the way that the 
objects were falling down from the sky, we could do something that's kind of like generally moving this way, but like also generally kind of random. And if we look back at this, this the squiggles, they, yeah, they kind of go in all sorts of directions. Um, and they actually are also further down. So I'm going to have to move this down a little bit. Move it to 13. I'm going to move get this one down to 10. These are kind of the layers again. Each one needs to be on the right level so that the drawing order is respected. Um, okay. So squiggle. I actually, I'm going to make it uh, long again. Okay, so we're going to get our reference to two. Going to get our reference to easing. We're going to get a reference to the palette. And we're going to make a bunch of these squiggles like the other thing, the other animation that we made with the falling objects. Um, the difference is we're basically going to do a sign function kind of horizontally and then we'll just rotate everything 45 degrees and randomly place it to give the effect of kind of like wind or breeze and there's not really like thick Thick, um, yeah, there's not really thick, uh, thickly thick lines in this um, image. So uh, yeah, never mind. We won't do that. So like before, we got to make points. There's got to be a number of points. Probably just make twenty points, like many as the, ver uh, the shapes. There's a group. And at start, we'll add the group and at end, we'll remove the group. And um, there'll be a percentage as always. Uh, the X, we'll need to say that there's kind of some general width, which I'll say is just two dot width times three. And that'll be X times width minus width over two. Our y will be zero. Well, if our y will really be math that sound times theta plus phi times radius, like a height. Um, our height will be width times an aspect ratio, which is maybe like three to one. So just divide by three. Maybe even more, divide by five. Um, so theta will be the percentage times math.pi times two, but then phi will be this kind of like multiplier, like how many um, Revolutions will there be total and that can just be math dot random 
times maybe even like as high as four. We got again, it has to be at least one or it has to be at least 0 0.5 maybe. I don't know, it has to be at least one. Um, and then I need to subtract height over two to kind of even everything. Oh no, never mind. Um, and then we'll make an anchor point. So we'll paste that push u two dot anchor x y, and we'll make a shape. Well, this will be the squiggle. Uh, will be a new two dot path with the points. This is not is closed will be false, and is curved will be true. Var is closed equals false. Var is curved equals true. And then group dot add squiggle. So now we should see a bunch of squiggles. At the start, we should place them all over um, the page. Um, equals shapes, or no, group dot children I. Squiggle dot position dot set x y r x equals math dot random r y equals math dot random two dot height times two dot width. Okay, so now you can see there's lots of squiggles all over all over the page. That is not the curve that I thought it was gonna be. It's maybe like not. The height is probably even less, maybe like 10, less, maybe 20. And the amount is probably even smaller. It's just math.random. So here we've got a lot of different Oh, the phi is random at this level. That's why. Oh, I wonder what happens when you print this web page. It's kind of interesting. Um, four plus one, zero point five. Okay, yeah, this is kind of like more what I was expecting to see. So now we could say squiggle dot rotation equals math dot pi over four. So now they're kind of all angled in a certain direction. Except I wanted to do it the other way. And we could probably add a random um, 16 plus minus math dot pi over 32. So now there's kind of like a little bit of discrepancy between the different squiggles. The squiggle needs to be styled. Squiggle dot no fill, squiggle dot stroke equals palette dot stroke. Okay, now we've got a bunch of these different Strokes, they're all kind of the same length is a problem. Var w equals math dot random times width times 0 0.5 plus 0.75 plus width times 0 0.25. So let's use this instead. Okay, so now we got, okay, now we got a lot of different squiggles. A lot of different sized squiggles, tightness of squiggles. I think the height should be 
randomized a little bit more per we could do a taper on the random all right sorry on the height so now they kind of like go in and out like a like a squiggle maybe they should be related to so That's kind of different. So I'm kind of changing how intense the, where the height should be. And this kind of looks more like, I don't know, electrical. Well, it's kind of, Kind of similar. Also, the the squiggles kind of go in a box, so maybe maybe we should orient them like they're going around, like framing. Let's do that instead. Um, I won't do this. I'll just do a regular taper and also a. Uh, a lot of variants. And I'll multiply the variance times that. And maybe just increase it a little bit so we have. Yeah, so that, that's kind of more interesting, I think. Um, And okay, let's say it's 350. Okay, actually, let's not change the positions yet. Let's just animate them. We'll move on to the last frame for the crescendo, and then we'll kind of clean everything up. Um, if we have time. <laughs> So like before, we're just going to have the squiggles um, start at zero. We're going to have a squiggle uh, velocity. And um, could potentially, you know, there are so squiggles have dashes also. I comment this out we get the squiggles we could animate dashes but I won't do that right now I don't feel like it fits with the aesthetic that um, Chu made okay so we have ending equals zero we have these velocities and so basically what we can do is just go through our squiggles and just add the velocity to the ending. Oh, it shapes is not, oh, sorry, not shapes, but group.children. And here we'll say if squiggle.ending is greater than or equal to is less than one, we'll animate the ending. Else if squiggle.ending uh, beginning is less than one, then squiggle.beginning. 
beginning plus equals squiggle dot velocity. Else squiggle dot ending equals zero, squiggle dot beginning equals zero. I think this should make them just animate in perpetuity. And yeah, it's really fast, but we can also change the squiggle position at this time. And I'm gonna slow down the velocity by a lot. Um, where did we set the velocity? So yeah, there, now we have like a lot of, a lot more movement. We need a baseline amount of speed, but not like a ton. They're still moving pretty fast. So maybe let's see what this looks like. Interesting. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a an explicit foreground, middle ground, and background because I want the squiggles to be above everything else. I think that's more interesting. Um, so here I'm gonna make uh, resources dot set background is group resources dot set middle ground two dot make group resources dot set foreground two dot make group and now here I can say instead of I can say foreground equals resource, uh, sorry, middle ground equals resources dot get middle ground. Have to go through all the animations, but not all the animations, but all the, these effects that we wrote, but instead of saying two dot add, now we can just say middle ground and middle ground. Um, two dot. And here we can say foreground. And two dot add, we say foreground. Foreground. And these other animations, the same thing. So this is the blob. The blob should be in the background. Bar background equals resource target background. Um, background dot remove. Background dot add. This is the rectangle. The rectangle should be a background also. Background. Background. So we got the animation. We got the melodic harmony. We just need to add, we got the mallow blob. We just need the following objects, which should also be the middle ground. And, oh, cannot read property background dot add. Oh yeah, because we need to reload the scripts. 
think everything might break right now. But no errors, so that's good. And let's see. Okay, it loads. Oh. Okay, that draws in the correct order. Oh, but this blob didn't add in the right place. Background. Oh, here we go. Background. I'm actually gonna also, when the, it's kind of like the drums come in right here at 30, I think I'm gonna get rid of all of these here. This helps kind of build a little bit more interesting momentum. Okay, so this fades out. Let's see the blob go. Okay, the blob is working. It's the right order. Okay, and the squiggles are also now playing on top of everything. You can see that like some of these objects aren't being deleted. That's actually because I'm scrubbing around when it plays um, all the way through. I think it should be fine. <laughs> mark, mark my words, right? Oh, thanks for the thanks for the kind Tom comments, Mike. Um, it's obviously not like graphically as high in fidelity as some of the other projects that I worked on, but this kind of shows is a nice overview of kind of like what what uh, what tools I've been using to make a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna message in a chat. Um, okay, so we got a lot of this down, um, might be nice to have the squiggles come in kind of gradually up until this point, 148, when they're kind of all at a peak. So, we can do that with opacity. Wait, I mean, yes, we can do that with opacity, but now I'm thinking like, wait, but how do we do that with opacity? <laughs> um, I know what we'll do. We'll only animate um, some of the squiggles um, and only the squiggles so this is like halfway through. Well, it's not halfway through because it's... Oh, uh, Mike asked what the FFT tool is. This, um, this is a tool I made a while ago. It's called Equalizer. Um, it's on GitHub, it's under MIT. So feel free to use it. <clears throat> and um, you can basically drop audio clips in. So I'll just drop the, the curling band song that we've been working with, drop it in. 
and uh, it loads up and analyzes it and it kind of try I mean it's pretty light like the analysis that it does but it does some averaging it does kind of some uh, like triggers of like when the volume is like kind of on the increase and at certain levels and so each of these kind of different visual elements shows that and then there's like a timeline associated with it if you want to you can record all the kind of like moments where the audio is kind of going up and increasing in uh in volume and uh oops and I think if you stop it you can kind of like go back and see and you can export this as JSON and you can load that JSON back into your equalizer so that you can use this as you know data however however you want um, so it's a simple tool it requires the 2JS the, the programming the draw the 2D drawing library that I made but um, yeah it's it needs some love if you clean it up. Um, but yeah, exactly. You can you can bake out the data, and and you can also like you know manipulate this data because it's usually you can uh, scroll to see it's it's pretty noisy. Um, so if you find kind of some cadence that you really like, you can kind of like fiddle with that. You can also you know uh, click on these and uh, turn it into a beat or a hold and delete it or, or add it or change the values. Um, so you can do that directly in, in this little this little tool. It's not like super great. It's also made like, uh, I think it was made like six years ago. So it's, it's like pretty old school JavaScript now <laughs> um, in terms of like a component that's really like composable or whatever. But, um, but yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you like it. it it's been, super useful um just for having like a base a, a little bit like level up of um kind of ff it's not like true fft analysis but um but it, it reminds me of like in processing i would use a library called sonia <clears throat> and it just added like some damping and some other kind of like easy math functions on top that made kind of uh, more like emotional sense like if you were trying to add add like music to drive an animation um, in this we're so far we're only using it on the the blob in the beginning uh, but but yeah it's it's there and you can also the last thing that you can do is you can um, I think it's like this you can change the resolution so now there's it's it's kind of like mapped to look at only um a range of like the four uh like an average of the four core f frequency um bandwidths so this is probably like zero to like 500 hertz 500 to a thousand or no sorry not zero to like zero to five thousand five thousand to ten thousand 10,000, 15,000, 15,000, 20,000. You can go all the way up to 64. You could like really beef it up if you want, um, if you if you want that kind of like fidelity. So you can see like the viz looks pretty different based on like the resolution that you set. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Equalizer. Thanks for the question. Um, okay. So for the crescendo, I was thinking, so far we have like pretty abstract objects kind of like flying in and out. The, the squiggles we could like work out a little bit more. Oh yeah, of course, Mike. Um, happy, to, happy to talk about this stuff anytime. Um, I think for the crescendo though, it would be cool and we have about an hour before we need to render things out. It would be cool to basically recreate this frame, biting my tongue, seeing if I could, and like animate this bubble here. Um, I don't know if that's an egg or like she's, it's like the statue's blowing some bubble gum, but um, I think this would be cool. And so uh, let's, uh, let's go into that. It requires a little bit less coding and a different technique 
um, that we've used so far, so I feel like it would be good to mix it up a little bit. I'm just taking a screenshot of this and throwing it on my desktop. And I'm going to open up Illustrator to do the drawing because I don't try, I don't know, I'm not super used to the pen tool in Figma. Um, yeah. I think another thing we could do for the crescendo to add noise is like run some kind of like inversion, like invert the colors or something and like flicker that. That's always like an easy, easy win. Okay, <clears throat> so I need to just go in here and trace basically this, uh, this shape, I'm just gonna do it super quickly. It's kind of like living out my dreams of, you know, one of those like Photoshop um, time-lapse artists that I don't do that much of watching of anymore, but I did a lot in high school. And, uh, you know, gonna be just one little asset that we're probably gonna like tweak quite a bit anyways so it doesn't need to be perfect I the effect that I have in mind is um, something that I'm like pretty excited to show you guys is something that I made a long time ago it's kind of funny how like I had a hard time sleeping last night and I was thinking like, oh, I've got all these cool ideas, all these new ideas that I want to try. And of course you kind of just go with what you know. Um, so I just going to make sure that these line up. I mean, that's close enough, whatever. And... So what we're gonna do for this last scene to get something a little bit more formal and uh, consistent with the album art is we're actually going to load this in as SVG data. I didn't like that curve. I took this class with my buddy Nick um, by Jessica Hish on drawing curves, mainly for type, but it was a really good class, and I'm not like a super snob, but when I am in the shop, so to speak, for work, I like making it look really nice. This is pretty heinous, but it's going to do the trick. And we've got 50 minutes left, <laughs> so there's not a ton of time to make it happen. Oh, I got a really nice message from Robbie. Thanks, Robbie. Robbie is like probably my closest friend who's really going out there, making his name and uh, doing awesome stuff, taking risks creatively and uh, asking himself tough questions along the way, trying to figure out like, you know, is this, is this the right voice for what I'm trying to do? 
is this the right platform, is this the right avenue, all that sort of stuff. So, um, let's go back here. Maybe there's another, maybe we can pull, yeah, like this, this woman's face to do the part that's visible, invisible. Snip another face. It's, working on stuff is so much easier when you have great assets to work with. So I'm just going to open up this other image, copy it in, kind of like vaguely get. The, the size like kind of working the same. And then just get the get the clean like it's that nice uh oh I think I'm outside in a it's in a weird view. Um Gonna get that nice uh, Mona Lisa look. Let's see, where's my stroke? There it is. One thing that Robbie and I had talked about a little bit about, like, just like the NFT space and digital art is like, what is. I think she should smile. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> the world's kind of rough right now. It's not worth smiling. Um, Yeah, one thing we've been talking about is just kind of like what is what is the you know obviously there's like a financial element to all of this crypto art, but kind of like what is what is kind of the native the native kind of components of a, of a crypto art piece, and I think one thing that he got me thinking about was like you know a lot of the work that I've done, it's like real-time graphics, I'm trying to get away from um, celebrating the image, one one image, a digital image. Um, so uh, I don't know if I like it with eyes. Maybe it's better without eyes. Yeah, it's kind of like nicer. We'll delete those eyes in a second. And uh, yeah, I think with this with this project, this kind of like experiment, I think one difficulty in it is like, I mean, programming's cool because you know, like we did with the one of those animations, we basically just like copy and pasted it like over and over again, and um, kind of like generative art that I learned at UCLA is. Uh, really kind of like in line with this of of being able to have you know hundreds thousands um, lots of different um, versions of the same thing that are all kind of unique or different and so for me I think I really like devalued the image I stopped you know I, I made a lot of images as a kid that I was like really proud of, really obsessed by. Um, but images as an adult, kind of, I stopped doing that. I started making software. I think it's still like creative and artistic, but it, it just doesn't feel like it fits within this new medium. Um, I think we're gonna recreate this thing in code, but maybe we'll have everything else 
not encode. So I'll have like a blue background. And this will be white. And select same appearance, same stroke color. Make this all that blue, which is what was the blue? Windows, too much code. Projects, color palette, 50, 125, 25. 50, 125, 225. And wait, this was not yellow. Also, this was also at 50, 125, 225. Actually, let's make it the green because. Yeah, it's kind of like a different color. Keep forgetting though. 255, 65, 175, 255, 155, 175. Oh, that was the fuchsia. 20, 50. 20, 50. Okay. I'll save that. Well, I guess what we'll do. So I'll group, I just want to make sure we don't have the image anymore. Okay, yeah. I will group this. I'll make an art box out of it. And then I'm going to make another art box for this guy. And we'll fit to, oh, I got to select it. Okay, so now we, we've got these two objects that we're basically going to um, use artboards. We're going to load into 2JS. Documents. We've got 40 minutes to do it. Oh my god. Running against the clock. This is, I love watching the Great British Bake Show, and this is, I'm feeling like, I'm never, I could never be a good enough baker. <laughs> To, to join, but um, I'll call this bust, SVG. Use our boards range. We'll use the first art board. And this one's tricky with 2JS. You need to keep presentation attributes. I know you can kind of use style attributes, but presentation attributes are better. It's good to use SVG 1.1. The Adobe code editor, like what it spits out is like pretty heinous, so. It's better to be more explicit. Um, and frame.js, examples, files, SVG. This one is, I'll just call it bubblegum. Even though it might be an egg, we'll have to ask. Chew later. Um, okay. Okay. So. This moment starts at 148. I will make a new animation here. I'm going to make the blob stop at 148. Oh, which is, oh god, the math. Um, 148 to, this is what, 183. Let's go to 184. This is 108. Okay, so this effect will be the bust animation, the crescendo. I'm going to need to um, and we're going to load, let's just load this in and just make sure that it loads correctly. So we say 
var two dot var bust equals two dot load, and I'm gonna go back to the gray backdrop because it lives in the same place. And we're not gonna load the gray image, but we're gonna load the bust.svg. And this bust, we're going to, at the start, we're gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna get the middle ground, and we're gonna add the bust, and then uh, we're also gonna remove the bust middle ground dot bust, uh, bust. And let's see, uh-oh, example files bust, SVG not found. Where did I put it? Oh, it's called bust01 because it was the artboard. Let's see, does that fix the problem? See if the bust returns. Let's return to group with children. It's got a group. Yeah, it's got a rectangle and paths. So it's there. It just needs to be centered. Uh, we will do bust, well, shoot, should really just load it, this returns the SVG, var bust, oh geez, only if bust exists here, can we really add it? Um, okay, so we got, okay, bust should equal the SVG. We're going to do bust dot, well, bust dot children zero, uh, wait, okay, sorry, SVG children zero. If I look at this, I'm looking at this tree hierarchy. So the group that we originally made has a child of a group, and that child has all the elements. So we're going to get the first thing of that, and then we're going to center it, and that's going to orient everything in the center. And then here we're going to uh, position it in the center of the screen and just kind of see, see what we get. Um, there's no but. There is a bust, though. Okay, so... Let's refresh this and see if it loads. Oh my gosh, look at that. We got a bust. Doesn't look quite as cool as, uh, as I thought it did, but like with any other editing suite, the cool thing is, you know, you can go in and edit edit things here and there. Let's just smooth out that. At least make it a little bit smoother. And just resave it. Oh, if anybody knows how to set the um, directory in Illustrator, that is super helpful. Okay, so this is called bust01 SVG. Use our ports range one. Yep. Okay. So we got this loaded. What are we gonna do exactly with it? Well, this is kind of the fun part for me. We got these blue lines going. I think at this stage we should probably make the blue lines be like audio reactive somehow, like the thickness or something. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do we do the bus dot center, and then we also do the bus dot subdivide. Oh, I can, actually we can do the subdivision in. Oh no, let's do it in code. Um, so what does this subdivide do? It basically like adds more points <clears throat> in the in the SVG object. And so what we can do now is at the start, um, we will go through all of those objects. Um, okay, this is gonna be a little bit, you know, for those of you all who use Illustrator, we're gonna get a little into the weeds here. Uh, I'm going to select all the objects with the same appearance. Uh, same appearance, and I'm going to make a compound path with them. <clears throat> so now we only have three objects. We have the green square, we have the white bust, and we have the um, face. So I'm going to resave that out. And the reason I'm doing that is that it just makes it uh, simpler to iterate through all the elements, all the vertices that we just subdivided to create like a, a cool, a cool like effect. Um, the documents, documents, frame JS, we got half an hour. Bust a one. Oh my God, bust a one, oh one, come on. Windows file system silliness. Okay. So we got this all lined up. I'm going to go over to our bust. And, um, We will iterate through all the vertices in the bust, which would be so the the face. Let's let's actually just uh, set these out as variables. So bust dot face equals bust dot children two. The bust dot background equals bus dot children zero and the bus dot sculpture <laughs> equals bus children one and so we can go through all the vertices so for var i equals zero, i less than um, bus dot sculpture dot uh, vertices dot length i plus plus v equals bus dot sculpture dot vertices i and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of save what the vertex value is and then add randomness to it to kind of make it animate and wiggle um, radially. And we're going to we'll kind of add this to the FFT value. Um, so we say v.origin equals new to dot vector and we're going to copy v and so now we can say the origin is v.origin and now we'll say v.x equals v.origin plus math.random times 5 minus 2.5 let's just see what that looks like and then we'll kind of like tweak it from there uh, v dot origin dot x dot y 
and bus dusk will register too. Okay, so let's see. Oh, there's a ton of red red errors. Can I reproperty vertices of undefined? Oh, that's that's important. Oh, um, we should also do a check here that if not bust return. So we won't get those same errors. Okay, so let's look at the group. Children. The first one is the rectangle. The second one is the path. Yeah, and two paths. So that seems okay. So bust dot background sculpture face. Yeah. Bus dot position, bus dot sculpture, middle ground, bus dot sculpture. Yeah, this has vertices, so it should be fine. It's got 291. Whoa, that's subdivision did quite a lot. I'm just gonna hit refresh. Maybe maybe the issue was that it's just kind of like setting everything up. Nope, cannot read property vertices of undefined. Oh no. not helpful. Um, okay, let's see. Can I read property vertices? I'm gonna find, so that's, oh, sculpture. It would help if I spelled it correctly. Um, okay, can I read property X of undefined? Oh, because the start happened. Oh, yikes. This is this is some weird circular dependency garbage. Um, I mean, this is a really huge deal. Um, can I read property vertices of undefined? Oh, wait. So I'm getting the bust, but I'm not getting the sculpture. And we describe the bust here and we set the bust here. But in the playback, we're not getting the sculpture. Um, let me just refresh. Maybe this. So the bust, the bust is set. That should be fine. But can I read property vertices of undefined? Bust sculpture vertices. It's probably this bust is the one that's busted. So the I'm gonna bust yeah it's path. All right, I think 
that. Fixed it. It's just more spelling mistakes. Okay. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's wiggly. That is exactly the effect I was going for. But now I want to do it also with the face. So we need to get the full amount. Math.max equals this amount or the face amount. I'm not sure which one actually would have more. I think it's the bust, but maybe it's the face. And we'll say if i is less than bust.sculpture.vertices.length, then you can do all these checks. And if i is less than bust.sculpture. I don't know. bust.face.vertices.length. Similar thing, but kind of different. Face, yeah. And then down here, we'll do the same thing. Um, amount, and if i is less than bus.sculpt dot vertices dot length and if i is less than bust dot face dot vertices dot length and the reason I'm kind of pitting these both in one for statement is it's just less performance hit on JavaScript than running two consecutive ones. Um, wow, that is like coding and speaking is also difficult. Um, I don't know how teachers do this. It's very impressive. I had so much more respect, as I mentioned on Twitter, for live streamers. Jeez Louise. Uh, Unexpected token. Oh, thanks, Elisa. Yeah, this subdivide effect is a, is a really cool effect. It's based on this. Uh, whoa, that's the live stream. It's based on this one. You can interpret SVGs, and then you can just basically like uh, have them wiggle, just with like a, a little bit of code. It's it's really not not that hard. Um, but am I? Are we getting errors? Okay, let's just let's just check this out. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to, let's see. I think uh, we're gonna need the equalizer. So now we can wire this up. Instead of the math.random, we can just get a sound, the volume. Um, it's equalizer dot analyzer dot data and this one we'll just do uh, data oh geez uh, whoa var d equals data 2 over 255 and data data and this one we could save our d equals data five over two fifty five. So these are just different bandwidths, so it'll be just be like slightly different um, animations. So. 
can kind of see it. it's pretty small right now. So let's increase the kind of effectiveness, uh, intensity. We'll have a strength variable. Right now it's five. Let's bump it up to 20. And we'll just copy this out change it and change this to half of it and so what this does is it allows um, well in the random in the case of the random number it, it allowed for just kind of like a full movement um, but in this we might have to change it a little bit Yeah, because we're just kind of like adding one value in one direction for both x and y, we need to we need to f mix it up. Um, so instead of doing the data over data over two fifty five is a zero to two fifty five value. Yeah, um, basically I could sign this so that it goes from positive one to negative um, yeah it, it like well uh, I think we're, we're I think in 15 minutes we're really just looking for some kind of movement so I'll just so this this will make it operate more like a random not a random value but um, it can go both like positive nope that actually didn't do what I thought it was gonna do <laughs> uh, okay maybe let's just go back to the random number What I'll do is Mike said that he likes the hand-drawn vibe of the wiggle. Um, so maybe we'll just kind of play that up more. Um, and so instead of the D being this, it'll be math.random. And this will be math.random also. And then what we'll do is basically wrap this whole function to only happen like every other frame or every fifth frame. And so then it'll kind of slow down and kind of give it a stop motion vibe. Um, and we do that with the same uh, way that we do var frame. We'll do bar frame equals zero, frame equals zero, frame plus plus, or actually frame equals frame plus one mod. We're gonna just mod some, some amount. It's probably like every 10, every five frames or something. And so if frame doesn't exist, which is zero, it means that if it's zero, then don't, or we'll just say if frame is less than four or bust. So now only every fifth frame does the animation like change. And now it's, it's really got that hand, hand drawn vibe. And so now we can, basically over time like reduce the strength um, and actually shoot we should just probably do this on the background too because um, that's just like a kind of it's kind of nice cross effect to the to the blue um, hatches which also I feel like are like really not being seen against the blue here so maybe let's Let's change these to the dark gray. Um, select same. 
stroke color. Ah. God damn it. I guess it's just these two now. And the, that dark gray is color palette 90. Okay, we'll save this. And I think in 10 minutes we should have enough time to add this bubblegum thing. Um, documents, frame.js, examples, files, SVG, bust.svg, use our ports range one, save. Okay. Replace. And in the animation, we're just going to edit this bust01. So the background, okay, so now we're just going to do all of them. Bust dot background dot vertices dot length. If i is less than bust dot background dot vertices dot length. Bar v equals bust. And I mean, geez, this is just like so badly, poorly written. Yikes. But that's not what people see in the end. Unless we tokenize the code. Which we could, because, you know, it's just an export button. And here's the whole shebang that we made over the last uh, five hours. If i is less than bust dot background dot vertices dot length and I'm gonna just copy all of this. Um, bust dot background dot vertices mat dot random. Okay. Let's see if that affects, yeah, so that affects the background also. Okay, real quick, we're going to um, modify this strength to be a function of the time so we'll say um, 20 times progress so now we'll start at except it will be 1 minus progress so now and we want it to end at 0.5 or halfway through we don't want it to do this anymore so I'll just multiply this times 2 and We'll just need to also clamp it so that it doesn't go below zero. And so now we can say, or actually I don't even need to clamp it. I could just use an if statement to discard this. If strength is less than zero, return. So now we have this playing out and I'm hoping that it'll get less jittery. Yeah. It's kind of like smooths out kind of halfway in. And so after that halfway comes in, I think at this point, 225 220, 228 is a good time that we could introduce this bubble. And we'll just have it uh, kind of expand. Elise is asking a question, how often do you dream about code? Um, pretty much never. But I do think about code pretty much like right up until going to bed. Um, <clears throat> so kind of like dreaming. I mean, I guess it's more like daydreaming about code, less like 
night dreaming about code. Um, I want to, before we do that real quick though, I want to increase the, uh, here at 148, I want to increase the size of the squiggle, the, the thickness of the squiggles. Increase, uh, yeah, squiggle, squiggle increase. Um, and we'll have this last for 20 seconds. So 128. Ugh, maybe that's too long. Maybe 118. And so we need to export out this group to be able to be read. So I'll just say resources.set squiggles is the group. And then in this uh, animation here, uh, crescendo, crescendo, um, I will var squiggles equals resources dot get squiggles and at the start we're gonna just like bump it up immediately we'll say squiggles dot oh actually I don't know if I can do this equals five let's just see if that yeah that worked and so then as it kind of reduces I'll say squiggle dot line width equals five times one minus progress so it'll go from five and then go down to nothing and then that will or sorry should go down to four plus one so they're not disappearing they're just kind of going back to their regular state so let's like re look at this Oh, but when they end, they also need to go back to squiggles.linewidth equals one. And the end is even if you were to switch, see now they've kind of gone back to the regular. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a interesting look at it. It slowly resolves. Probably not my finest work, but it has some interesting effects. I just also want to make sure that the squiggles cap is round. Uh, we got five minutes to add this bubble gum. Okay, cool. So let's see. This set two twenty five, right? Jeez. Oh, Hello. If strength equals zero, oh, um, we have to run this at least once more so that it goes. Well, I could just, I'll just, uh, I just want to run it once though. Oh, shoot, the four minute mark. Okay, we can go a little bit over, but, um, okay, I'll just, I'll just get rid of this for now. And I will make sure that the strength is capped. So it's either this or zero. Okay, cool. And uh, okay, so 225. Add a new uh, bubble that goes 
goes to 184. And I'm gonna copy a lot of this code into here because I'm getting the bubblegum O2 SVG and we're just not gonna call it bus, we're gonna call it bubblegum and bubblegum, bubblegum. We're not gonna subdivide it. But if bubblegum uh, middle ground dot add bubblegum likewise if bubblegum middle ground dot remove bubblegum oh there it is <laughs> great um, is there an error why is it not centered this is where we're also gonna put it in this two dot width over two, two dot height over two. Um, maybe the bubble gum. What is the bubble gum? Oh, the bubble gum is just a straight up path. is bubblegum blowing finale and okay there it is um we want to scoot it over a little bit huh plus two dot with or sorry minus two dot with times zero point To, this is why I didn't originally want to load any code because it's, the frame.js just gets more fickle. Okay, there. Not the same as uh, our source image. Where is that? Here. But I think a, a nice... A nice way to start the weekend. Blow some bubble gum on a nice day. Uh, hey, uh, I'll play the role of that client who always has a feature request at the 11th hour. Okay, cool. Hey, it'd be cool if the bubble gum transformed into the FFT visualization mapped radially. Let's do it. Okay, so we got the equalizer. We actually have the blob, uh, the blob data. Well, actually, Mike, we did do this at the very beginning. This is actually the same thing. This is this is that FFT blob. So maybe we can uh, we can do a similar but different uh, different addendum to this. If not, bubblegum, you gotta get out of here. Don't run this code. And then, so the path, path is the bubblegum. Uh, um, the bubblegum, <clears throat> okay, so we'll get the, the data will be equalizer.analyzer equalizer dot analyzer dot data and the FFT um, is we'll just get zero we'll just get the second one divided by 255 and here we can just say uh, bubblegum dot scale dot X equals uh, FFT plus 0 0.5 0.5 times it's kind of like a blowing the bubble gum I guess um, 
I need to set this as an actual thing though. Bubblegum.scale equals new to dot vector one one. And then uh yeah, let's Oh shoot, but it's centered. Um Let's not center it. And why is the scale so small? Oh shoot, but we do need to center it because of the positioning. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever, it's, it's totally cool. Um, No, not four more hours. Sorry, I can't do four more hours, Chris. Um, but we could do a, just a little bit more. I what I want to get to oh is uh, I'll just like ease this. Um, what is the ease? Well, it's a uh, kind of like slowly animate towards. Um, I think it can start at zero. Uh, we're just gonna slowly animate towards Oh shoot, there's lots of errors. Bubble, oh, because it's bubblegum. Come on. I uh, I really like naming variables really long descriptive names, but in a kind of like challenge like this, it's not a very good idea. Because this is a time where we could look at the equalizer to see. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And maybe maybe closer to ten is a better. Get the tenth bandwidth. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about this whole scale thing with the with the blob. Um, I guess what I need to do is just increase the intensity of it. Yeah, I think, I think that's, I think that'll do. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, geez, while this plays out, we're just kind of like the last final things we can do to this. NFT video. I think we can Make sure it runs all the way through. It's probably a good one. Um, and yeah. I should have used the drawing sooner. It's kind of like a first noob mistake oh i wanted to invert i think the last thing we could do that's easel easy is to invert um 
invert the color to increase the contrast on uh, on the crescendo. Uh, and also this, this would be nice if the squiggles kind of came in slowly. That's the cool thing about this thing is that you just kind of start editing it uh, while it's playing. So we set a velocity, but I'm gonna do a actual velocity, which is zero, and so we'll basically build up to that velocity being applied. Wait a second, that didn't work at all. Um, excuse me. Squiggle.ending plus actual velocity. Actual velocity equals plus equals squiggle velocity minus actual velocity times. I'll just make this really small. There we go. There we go. That's that's, uh, that's not the effect I wanted to go for, but it's, it's better <laughs> than nothing. Because <laughs> the squiggle crescendo. Oh, the cops are here. They're trying to make me stop. Um, all right. So I just want to do this inversion and then we can call it, right? Actually, I think this is okay. Um, Oh, I should, I just want to fade this out. Actually, fuck it. Um, remove, I'll just extend this to the end, which is 184. And, okay, blowing bubbles all the way to the close. Okay, let's just, Fade out to black. Fade out to the square. Fade out, yeah, to the gray square. We started on a gray square, so let's end with a gray square. Well, I just, I just lost the, um, I just lost the clip that I added. Okay, just a random clip floating around somewhere. Uh, 
so yeah, I'm gonna put it down here. And this is um, animation fade out elements. This is gonna be middle ground, middle and back and foreground fade out. So we get the foreground resources get foreground background equals resource get background and on the start foreground dot opacity equals one sorry not foreground sorry not background middle <laughs> middle back oh my god. Can you tell I'm ready for the weekend? <laughs> um, okay, we'll just do a simple fade out. Foreground dot opacity equals one minus progress. Middle ground dot opacity equals one minus progress. Ah, back to the gray square. Okay, but this should really just be 184, 183, and RT equal, ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Okay, so we got the fade out. We got the, um, yeah, I think. I think the invert is okay. I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys, you guys feels it's, it's like it's done. Should, maybe you should just watch it one time real quick. The three minutes. All right. I'm going to hit play. Oh, wait. Shoot. I set the soundtrack to be at a low volume. Just gonna put it back to the full volume. So this is where we're kinda getting to the tail end here. Shit, that opacity is fucked up. When we get down to the wire in the 11th hour, I start to swear. I apologize. Oh, but we set the opacity to one. What's going on? I think it just maybe we just need a refresh. Okay.
All right. Yeah, I think I think that's good. <clears throat> um, I will take a few minutes to thank you for joining me, but before that, um, there is like a very important part of this process that I only kind of tested, um, which is the rendering. So I would love to be able to do that with you all um, on the stream because I think that's part of part of the process, kind of like a decompress moment that I can have with you guys and like check check uh, check what everybody said and stuff. Um, and uh, we can all kind of like look at the final video I'll share with you guys. Okay, that goes to 184, that goes to 184. Um, yeah, I guess also, oh, I'll thank you for the, like the, the nice messages people are throwing in the chat. <clears throat> um, I guess any, any feedback you have also would be super valuable. Uh, just kind of like format and presentation and if you'd see, watch this again, or if it was helpful or interesting, um, I think all of that would be good to talk about. I think this part of the whole kind of like the space is about kind of like exploring, being excited to participate and um, yeah, I think this is, this is not a process that I'd like to do alone. So, um, okay, let's, let's render this out and see how it goes. Could just crash completely. Okay, FFmpeg is initializing. Oh no! Oh, see, look at that already. It's like rendering the wrong, th I, I didn't do something right. I, I set like a incorrect value somewhere. Well, this kind of lets you see at least what the what the uh, what the rendering process looks like in Frame.js. Um, yeah, basically just plays through the whole the whole um, clip and renders out PNGs takes those PNGs and kind of combines them in this application called FFmpeg, which is an open source video and audio media encoder. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for all the support. Um, Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see if it'll... I rendered a 10 second video. I wonder if there's like a memory issue with, you know, rendering out this many images, 30 images a second times 184 seconds. It's a, it's a lot of frames, so we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep the video running a little bit longer. But yeah, th thank you, thank you so much. Um, that was super fun. It's been something I've wanted to do for this song for a long time. And uh, glad I got to do it with you all. Lisa's asking, what's the next song? Well, one thing that I think is, uh, honestly, I feel like I could work on this like once, uh, you know, some cadence every week or two weeks or month to get to like a high fidelity, you know, really good version. <clears throat> but um, but it is cool to do these kind of quicker quicker studies. I think a learning that I have I think is to maybe rely more on hand drawn stuff and use that as material. Um, and. Uh, I think also in this like crypto art space, there is a, 
there's like a lot of licensing questions about like who can use what. So I think one other aspect of the song is like, you know, well, I can't just use any song. I think I, I was doing this in the early 2010s. I could go and embarrass myself, but you have my YouTube page already, so you can go and look at them for yourself. Um, but, you know, to like popular bands and uh, like Vimeo actually shut down my account because of DMCA requests. I got, I got slapped with like 25 in one day and you get a three strike violation for your account to get banned. And they're just, cause it's the same style as this. The videos are just like, you know, I made some visuals and I just posted it up. I credit the artists and stuff. Um, so I, I have a feeling like something like this is gonna be happening in this space as well. And so I wanna kinda be a little bit considerate to that uh, for the next song. But uh, I'm definitely open to looking for collaborators. I'm definitely interested to mint this and um, see kind of what value it could bring both for, you know, from the visual art side, but also from the music side. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of the question around the, the next song. I don't know how often I feel like I could do this. This felt like running a marathon, um, which I have done once before that I don't really feel like doing ever again. Um, but I am super, this was very invigorating, unlike the marathon. So uh, I, I would definitely do this again sometime. And uh, it's cool to see that the FFmpeg is still working. It's, it's encoding the video now, it saved all the images. So I just have to reshape this square and then we can post it up. Um, I guess, what do you guys think? Should I post the whole clip on Twitter or should I just post like a little segment and uh, and then mint the, mint the final thing? Oh, thanks Lynn, thanks, thanks for checking it out. Uh, yeah, it's more positive messages. Really appreciate all the support. Um, Yeah, I think this will run just for, it's at frame 280 and there were, there are actually quite a lot of frames, I think so. Yeah, there's 15, is that 15,000? No. There's a lot of frames. So this actually might take a lot longer Let's see, 184 times 30. Yeah, there's 54,000 frames. So this actually might take a while to render. Um, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll cut off the video, this video of my screen. <clears throat> I'll maybe, yeah, go back to nice, to see you all in this weird virtual format. Um, yeah, I just wanna say thank you um, for coming out and supporting and checking this out. And um, yeah, I hope this brought some joy to your Friday. Um, let me know if you do want, if you would like watch some part of this again, or if um, the output was, was of interest or if there's other ways to I don't know make this more fun and collaborative I think um, just to round this out like <clears throat> what I did today is very similar to a process I've done a lot of times while I learned how to computer program and um, one of the most memorable of these times was both at UCLA when I was really bad at programming, uh, or not bad, but just like very early on, didn't really know how to do a lot. Um, and I was around, you know, like uh, 20 or so, or maybe like 15 other peers. <clears throat> and that energy over the 10 weeks was awesome. The performance at the end was awesome. And also in 2010, iBeam here in New York City and Chelsea had a masterclass 
on visual music and it was um, sponsored by Ghostly so we had like a whole week where we could go in and like the Ghostly fellows like brought a hard drive over we got to pick any song that we wanted to and then we had a full week in the in the studio to basically come up with ever with whatever we wanted during the week there were lunch talks it was like super inspiring um, and so I think if if you know if anything for me like this experience is super fun I would love to share it more maybe that's on a performing side like in this venue that I just did but maybe um, there's there's a kind of like different community aspect to it so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and uh, I think pretty much everybody here is somebody that I know personally so um, yeah I, I'm looking forward to talking about all this stuff um, you know online in general um, and uh, yeah thank you again and have a great weekend okay I'm gonna show OBS now so you're gonna see how this thing stops Oh, wait, no, I have to go to YouTube. This is my first time. I don't know how it works. Okay, I'm going to end stream.